the weather is going to be delightful today as we wrap up the 94 home season for the Washington Huskies ranked number 22 this week hosting Keith Gilbertson and the California Golden Bears. Hello again everybody Don Foyer along with Sonny Siskiller. Sonny we're wrapping up the home season now for the dogs. Special game of course a Snohomish County battle Jim Lambright's undefeated against Snohomish County guys beating uh, Dennis Erickson in Miami. He'd like to be 2 and 0. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at some matchups this time around. First and foremost on the line a great one the senior Andrew Peterson going against the sophomore Reagan Upshaw one of the best in the conference. Well Andrew's done a great job all year. We all know that if we've been watching these games he'd like to go out with a win today and more importantly a great job against Reagan Upshaw who is their speed rusher. He's a tremendous athlete. Much of California's talent is very young, especially at the wide receiver position. They've got some go deep people that are downright blistering when it comes to speed. Well, Ihani Uwezuke against Hairston. Well, Russell's been the brunt of a lot of passes, big passes this year, primarily because Reggie Reese is such a great cover guy on the other side of the field, and Uwezuke is a speed burner. He runs 4 3 40. And Uwezuke is complimented with another one, Niall Benjamin. But here is the youngster who made his first start last week against Arizona and very respectable was Pat Barnes. Very, very respectable. Well, Gilby got a lot of heat by starting Pat Barnes. And uh, the young kid has great feet. He's got a tremendously strong arm. And he's just a great athlete. And Gilby wants to see him do well just to take the heat off all those people in the Bay Area. <laughs> they say he has the presence in a game like a Billy Joe Hobart. He really goes in and takes it by the horn. So we'll see how the youngster does today in a very unfriendly Husky Stadium. Huskies come into the contest. As you know it's six and three and at even five hundred three and three coming off the loss to Stanford in Pac-10 play. John Wales now number two in the Pac-10 in field goals and in scoring kicks off. And it'll go to Tyrone Edwards the number one returner in the conference and Wales doing a nice job of getting the ball into the end zone and no return. Starting an offense for California. The people in the backfield, Rutherford will play, so will Edwards at the tailback spot. Debaki, big, strong, 6'2, 240. Gonzalez, actually, it's going to be Sean Bullard at tight end, but they both play a great deal at the two wide receivers. This offensive line led by Brian Thurry at the wing side tackle, or the weak side rather, at 300 pounds. Todd Stewart, a newcomer at the sophomore, as a sophomore at the Strong side tackle. First and ten from the 20 yard line as Tavaki goes in motion. Go against the grain to get a man wide open. And a first down up to the 36 yard line is number five. That would be Sean Wilson, or Sean Bullard rather, the tight end who started ahead of Gonzalez. Stopped by Russell Hairston, the starters up front. Steve Hoffman proposed to his girlfriend this week. I assume they said yes. <laughs> and the rest of the people. Lamar Lyons, a senior, getting his last start here along with Russell Hairston and Lawyer Malloy leading this team in tackles. First and 10 from the 36 yard line after the pass to the tight end, Bullard. Inside, Raynard Rutherford right up the belly and has another first down and up to the 48 yard line of California. Two big plays, two first downs for the Bears. Stopped by Hairston and Ruchi Chambers. Remember, Gilby and the Bears with a big jump for a big lead last year. You can see the action up front there. They've got some really strong people, very big people up front, Don. But the one thing they've talked about coming in the ball game is the inexperience. But sometimes that big strength and <laughs> and uh, you know the overall football savvy will get you a long ways. Now they send Rutherford out to the right side. Barnes still looking way too much time. Complete for virtually maybe one yard. I was going to say no game, but goes to Rutherford as Donovan Schmidt is there defensively. And Ink Galiaga. Ink missed a sack on that play. He had him definitely trapped back there for a loss. Good job by the quarterback Pat Barnes to get the ball away. Here's what we're looking at. Downfield, nobody was open. Everybody was covered. And it's a good job by the receiver to come back to the ball right there and make the grab. Second down and nine from the 49 of California. Two wide outs to the left side, one to the right. Plenty of time, cross the middle, complete. And down he goes. I believe that was number 82, Marty Gaskins. Yes, indeed, who was stopped by Lawyer Malloy. Boy, that is some velocity on the ball. Yeah, he stood back there strong and fired it. 
You can see on this play, you watch the safeties back there. You see Lamar Lyons are splitting it, coverage there. Right in the middle is wide open on this play, and Lawyer's got to come over and make a big time hit there. But unfortunately, Marty Gaskins came up with a grab. Gaskins only, he's a junior with only 10 catches all year. First and 10 from the Husky 29 yard line. Started back on the Cal 20 in this game opening series. Flag goes down as Rutherford has a short game. David Ritchie on top of it. And let's see what the flag's about. And it looks like it's offsides on the Huskies. We have a man down. And it's a Husky. Looks like it's Deke Beavers. Dennis Seeley trying to find out where the pain is here. Maybe the right shoulder. It's like a possible separation. He's in a lot of pain, I know it's, that. It's not a knee or a leg, so and it looks like that right shoulder or right arm might have a dislocation. You get a lot of stingers too, Don. You know, yes. pain going down the back side of your neck and down through your shoulders, and uh, it hurts for a long while. You can see them squeezing the hand there, see if he's got any feeling. No question, this Husky team struggled last week against Stanford down there in the swamp, where uh, especially in the second half when that new quarterback, Scott Frost, came in and ran for 88 yards. Going left, going right, scrambling. This looks more along the lines of a stinger, maybe, because. Yeah, we'll see. No way to know until we hear from the sideline. Well, it looks like they're pushing on that shoulder. You're right. Could be in a separation. Have to figure out if it's still in there. Pat Barnes has been blistering here in the first stages of the game, and that is Dave Barr on the right, who injured his collarbone. I talked to him at practice Sunday yesterday. He says it's very frustrating for him. He says I'm fine. I can move. I can throw but I can't. They won't let me play because I can't take a hit yet. That's right. Yeah. It's unfortunate for him. You hate to get hurt your senior year. I know I got hurt my senior year. It's really frustrating and uh, you'd like to be out there in the field. Jason Shorick number 46 comes in to replace. Deke Devers will check on that to make for sure. First and five after the penalty, and now Barnes checking off with Benjamin. Anyways, okay on the left side, game or rather play clock down to four seconds. Plenty of time. Looks outside. Yes. Interception. Reggie Reeser, and he could have six. Away goes Reggie Reeser. He's got it. If he can beat the <laughs> tight end, Buller. touchdown, Washington. What a foot race. <laughs> 79 yard play. As this play developed, remind me of the route that the Huskies ran down at the University of Oregon. He overthrew the receiver, and Reggie Reeser opportunistic right there where he had to be. Nobody was going to catch him on this, Don. Buller took a shot at him, but too speedy is Reggie Reeser, the young man out of Pasadena who would like to play there next year as a senior wearing purple and gold. John Wales, and his kick he is good. So that quickly, we had only played three seconds short of two minutes, and Pat Barnes suffers a big mistake. Miscommunication with his receiver. He's on the phone right now with Denny Schuler, the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach. Well, the first man to get out there on the field for Pat Barnes was uh, Keith Gilbertson, went out there on the field and picked him up and uh, gave him a little encouragement and walked him back to the sidelines. Here's a good look right here. He's looking out the left all the way. His head is definitely out there. Nice pressure. Jason Chorak right there. Overthrew, but definitely that route was uh, very familiar. Let us not forget Cal was moving the ball very effectively to that point. Yeah, that'll drive a coach nuts as well as the players. You now you got to come back and get your morale back up because you came in the game, Jack. Jacked up the play and then an interception. Reggie Reeser right there. Reggie with his fourth interception of the year. None as exciting or as oxygen requiring as that one. <laughs> this man had to run 75, 79 yards. Good pressure right there by number 46. Jason Chorak on the quarterback. Made Pat Barnes maybe throw the ball a little high. Who is just a 
Redshirt freshman. He'll play a lot of football. I'll tell you, Don, you get guys rushing you like that, and you see that big helmet come near zeroing in on you. It makes you throw the ball a little higher. That is the ninth longest interception return in Washington history. Reggie receiving the accolades on the sidelines. He's probably the best cover guy on this team, and you can see why. He read the ball, didn't he? Yes, he did. But this man threw it. Instead of reacting to the man, he reacted to the quarterback, and that's how you come up with six. There's a little bit of that laughing and having a good time on the sidelines that Cliff and Klopp were talking about. Yes. Unfortunately, it wasn't a senior. Thank God it's not a senior. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wales. Wales. Regular kickoff, and we have to report that each time nowadays. Edwards will bring it out. Up to the 15, still going, and pops it up to the 21 yard line where Lawyer Malloy makes the tackle, number nine. Number nine, Edwards, is number one in the Pac 10, averaging almost 25 yards per return, and that is the Husky leading tackler, number nine. Nine on nine. First down. Tyrone will stay out there now as the tailback for Gilby's offense. 12.58 remaining here in the first quarter. 79 yard interception and return for touchdown by Reggie Reeser. First and 10 from the 22 yard line as they send both wide receivers to the right side. Edwards gets the call and picks up about four yards. Call it three as he gets up to the 24 25 yard line. And it'll be two yards. That got shorter the longer I watched. <laughs> Thought he had four and it was two before I knew it. So no gain on the play. Yeah, so I guess they'll put it right back on the line of scrimmage. <laughs> like to watch number 60, the center for Cal. Ben Lynch, strongest man. They call him the Iron Man, 6'4, 275. Going against Steve Hoffman and the rest of the boys up front. Second down and seven. Rolling out. Oh, what a catch. What a catch by Marty Gaskins again. That's his second catch today and only his 12th all year. It was Lawyer Malloy along with Reggie Reeser. They figured something out, haven't they? Well, I tell you, that was an excellent throw by Barnes. Simple play here. He's coming from left to the right. Setting up a nice quick release right there. You know, Cal's always had acrobatic, very talented wide receivers, and Marty Gaskins is just another one of them. It's, it's nice like, to see him on the field. It's like a pitcher getting a home run hit off of him, and then he comes right back with a strike right down Broadway. And he did that time. The strike to Gaskins. First and ten from the 37. Slow developing, but Edwards now with the big time yards up to midfield at the 50, where he's wrestled down by Lawyer Malloy. Could be a late hit. Flag down right where the tackle was made. Edwards came in with 288 net yards and averaging about three and a half, 3.8 yards per carry. Pat Flood, the referee with a white hat today. And the big white R on his back. After the play, dead ball, personal foul on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run, first and 10. Jim Lambright, never, ever happy with that. Gilby, his third shot at trying to knock off the dogs. Lost up here in 92 when he came up the first time. Almost had Washington last year. And right now, he's moving the ball almost at will, Sonny, even though they're down seven zip. Well, you know, coming in, he's going to have a good game plan. Rutherford. Got an opening. Somehow Kilpatrick's able to get over there, but not until they pick up another 10 yards. All the way down to the 25, and this Husky crowd is very quiet. <laughs> and they should be, I tell you. You watch at the end of this play, excellent blocking up front. Of Johnny Tabaki up there, the number 44, the big load. There's a good block in the corner right there. David Kilpatrick had a little speed, and if he didn't have that little quick burst, you know, Rutherford may have gone the distance. He certainly had the lane until it was filled at the last moment to get this man. Rutherford with 543 yards coming in. Second down and one. They didn't give him 10. Play action. Comes the pressure from Smith. Slips. Down goes Barnes. 
They'll lose about three or four to the sideline. Guys? If it wasn't for that big play by the Washington State Husky defense, Reggie Reeser, I don't know if we have the Huskies right now. California is spreading the field, and they're moving the ball well against the Huskies, Dan. That's right. And Dick Devers went down with a stinger. I was just over there talking to the trainer. He's got a stinger on one of the burners where the arm goes numb. He's going to be back, though, guys. Okay, thanks. We wondered if it was that or a, or a shoulder separation. Thanks. Third down and five after the loss of two on the sack. Actually, the pressure on the slip. Here comes Moore, short, short of the first down as he tried to lay it off to Ihani Uwezuke, number 20, and Hoffman reads it well. Good job by Pat Barnes, but then again, Jason Chorik again applying pressure on him at the top of the screen. Just a little three-step drop, I tell you what, he's not going to be able to take hits like this all day. He's going to have to have a little bit better protection from the Cal line. Against Arizona, well, as we see Jason Chorik playing now quite a bit because of the injury to Deke Devers. Now a field goal attempt of 45 yards. This is probably within his range. It's long enough. No good. Wide to the right. Ryan Longwell is the kicker who has hit three of his last five, now three of his last six. So no points for Cal here in the first quarter. We'll be right back. On first down, after the field goal attempt by California, Kaufman carries for the first time. We're down to the 9.23 mark here in the first quarter, and the Husky offense is finally on the field. And they lead 7 to nothing. Patrick Kessie gave Jared Willard a nice little love pat there at the end of that play, just to wake him up a little bit. Patrick's getting to be known for those that are borderline late. Second down and seven after the three-yard gain by the all-time leading rusher, Napoleon Kaufman, in his final home game. Janowski goes in motion. Nip again has a lead block with the fill very nicely by number 48, the true freshman, Brandon Whiting. He is already sixth in the Pac-10 in sacks this year, tied with his teammate, Reagan Upshaw. You'll see at the end of this play, Brandon Whiting doing what the coaches thought he could do. He flies all over the place. He's not just, a, you know, against the run. He's, he, he loves to uh, rush the passer. He's had several tackles for losses this year. And he's just a tremendous athlete for a true freshman. 6'3", 270 pounds. Talking with Gilby at practice yesterday, he says, I love my freshman. And that's <laughs> one of them right there. I can see why. Third down and six. Only a yard gain. Napoleon carrying two times in a row. The spread formation trying to get to his tight end, Ernie Conwell. Yes, and incomplete. So it's time to punt. Dante DePaula was covering number 24 for California. Had plenty of time to throw the ball. Andrew Peterson had a good job, had good block on Reagan Upshaw. No pressure whatsoever. But those are the kind of throws you got to lead him to the sideline, Don. Total offense as we look at Niall Benjamin, who's the conference leader in punt returns, by the way. Four total yards for the Huskies, 86 for California, yet the Bears trail by seven. Jeff Prince with a punt, returnable. And fumble. they calling it a fumble? No, let's see. California ball. And it will remain bear ball as Tony Parrish was involved in there. He's always involved in there. <laughs> Tremendous special teams player. Almost a block from behind by number 22 of Cal. Very close. That was close. Very close. <laughs> 38 yard punt by Jeff Prince, who came into the game, by the way, averaging 37 and a half, so right on his average. So Pat Barnes comes back in. Oregon ahead. Did you hear a score? Nope. But I heard something there on the PA announcement. Everybody watching and waiting. That's right. Oregon plays a little later. Pat Barnes. Boy, they get the pressure. There he goes. There's where you're young. And you got to know it's time to get it out of there as Ewell Eco is in there along with Deke Beavers back with that stinger. 
providing a stinger there on Pat Barnes. Don't you think, though, Barnes needed to get rid of that thing? We well, saw an example of his quick feet and avoidability back there in the pocket. And the one thing that uh, I'm sure Keith, Coach Gilbertson for Cal is uh, happy about is he didn't throw the ball up in the air because everybody was covered down the field. He had nowhere to go. <laughs> Even his own linemen were in the way. But Iwaliko did a real nice job, number 88, of containing so he had no place to go. Second down and 19. Barnes again. They go draw. Rutherford. Good yard. Humble. Humble into the midair. Oh, it's six. It could be six for Lamar Lyons. That is a gift if he scores, and he will. Oh, my goodness. Put it in the offering plate and take it home. May have been Lawyer Malloy who made the hit. 38-yard fumble return for the TD. I tell you, Rutherford's having a great day so far rushing the football. Another good job here. Lawyer Malloy with a big hit. Lamar Lyons. What a way to score as a senior. Step on that quarterback, get away from me. I'm going in the end zone. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> right into his breadbasket. No wonder Gilby's pulling his hair out. Boy, they've seen a lot of different ways to get scored upon this year. Oh, my goodness. And we'll see who moved first. As soon as Pat Flood finds out. Might have been Regan Upshaw of California, number 91. <laughs> Lamar Lyons, well, he's going out in style here at Husky Stadium. Offside on California. That's Lamar's first fumble recovery of the year, by the way. Offsides on the defense, decline. So they'll try again. Didn't want the extra five yards closer or <laughs> half the distance to the goal, which is still five yards. Yeah, not really. <laughs> about a yard and <laughs> For a half. the placement. I was, I was thinking where the ball is for the uh, the kick, but not hardly when it's on the two or the three. Well, we got to go back and look at that one again as Washington, in a half a quarter, has taken advantage of two takeaways to take a 14 to nothing lead. Watch the hit by number nine, Lawyer Malloy, springing the ball into the midst of Lamar Lyons. This has been a successful play for them so far in the ball game. Rutherford looking for a nice hole. There he covers the ball up, and just as he goes to one arm, Lawyer Malloy with a big hit. Lamar Lyons, <laughs> Evelico out there blocking in front. Looked like Richard Thomas. Washington came in with 19 takeaways for 64 points. They now have 21 takeaways. And then Lawyer Malloy. What's he doing? Changing jerseys, or is that having to do some equipment changing? There's Ronnie Miles. If he's talking that much, better keep an eye on the kick kickoff team because he's the one that's devised all these plays. As Lamar Lyons comes back onto the field, the Los Angeles native out of St. Monica High School. And what a way to go! <laughs> I still want to see that Chevy Impala that he restored with his grandfather. And that was a classic just a moment ago on that return. So far, what I've told the alumni band in the end zone, Don, I said, you guys are going to be doing a lot of push-ups today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still, you can't help but look at that scoreboard, and it still says Washington, four total yards, none passing, four rushing. Cal with 86, and they're down two touchdowns. <laughs> turnovers, turnovers. Kicking game. Oh, those are all so important. Not just offense and defense. Satellite kick. Tough one. Goes to Matt Clisby, number 27, one of the up men. And he is met by not another one. Oh my goodness. Huskies. Husky football. This one is beginning to feel like the SC route of California, which was 61 to nothing. And it was mainly because of mistakes. David Kilpatrick had the hit and he has the ball. Three of them today. Three. And another senior gets a takeaway. Yeah. 
Richie Chambers it appeared to me ripped it out of there Don and a great job. Was it Richie. OK. David Kilpatrick and Richie Chambers both got a hand in there and knocked it out. First to 10 on the 26 of California. Offense hasn't had to do much today so far as Janoski was the intended receiver. Going against Gerard Cherry number 30. There's a route we don't see a lot of and haven't seen too much this year by the Huskies but Damon had a good play fake on the ball. Janoski just threw the ball behind him he didn't lead him enough. Gerard Cherry number 30 he is a junior out of Berkeley and a burner. Yes. No picks this year though. Second down and 10. Hoffman. Banging off the right side Richard Thomas leading the way but maybe one. As the yards have been hard to come by last few ball games, even though Nip had over 100 against Stanford. This time, Andre Rhodes with a stop. See the line of scrimmage right there. Really no hole to run to, but one thing he did on that play, at least he stayed with it and stuck his nose in there and got what he could instead of trying to bounce it outside too soon. Well, and after a while, you're going to wear some people down if you're in better condition. They're down and eight. Outside flag goes down as Kaufman drops it. Flag went down right on the line of scrimmage down near the sideline. As Napoleon needed 36 yards coming in here to hit the 4,000 yard mark. And it'll go on Washington. The shift was illegal. Some sort of motion. Illegal against the offense. Decline. Fourth down. Again, that pass though that Damon threw out there in the flat was only about four yards downfield, and you know wasn't even close to being to the first down marker. Mm -hmm. Which was some of the frustration people were venting to Jim last year or last week. He said, "Hey, nobody was open down there where they needed the yardage, so you got to take what they give you, and then maybe get lucky and fight your way up to the first down marker." A 42-yard attempt now by John Wales. Long enough. And it is good. 605 remaining in the first quarter and a 42 yard field goal by John Wales. We'll be back. Kick. Edwards on his own six. Holds on to the ball with two Boy. hands wisely as he gets to the 26 yard line. Boy, so he was squeezing the leather out of that one. 20 yard return for big number nine. See if Tyrone stays out there or not. Kim Lapano, one of the other assistant coaches here for this Cal team, Lapano. A lot of familiar names. <laughs> Start looking at that roster or coaching staff for both teams. They know each other very well. And Pat Barnes, the newcomer, having an education today, he's racked up 86 yards, but there have been three turnovers, and his team is down 17 to nothing. Novaki goes in motion. They go back to that tight end. This is what they opened the game with, and it worked, and it works again here. A shot forward. I can't believe it. I can't oh, believe it. Molly. Another fumble. As lawyer Malloy is there with Russell Hairston and Tony Parrish. I tell you, the defense has come out fired up today, Don. I just can't believe these turnovers. That is four, and we haven't even played ten minutes in the first quarter. That's true, but the defense was, I feel, was embarrassed last week in the loss at Stanford. This week they're coming out again, as you said, the play they started the game with wide open. And it's an excellent play. Is it right there? Mr. Perry for the nice hit put the helmet right where he had to put it. Here's a great look. Oh, tremendous hit. Back to Mark Bruner on first and 10 but a flag goes down on the line of scrimmage. Starting on the 47 yard line of California. I wonder if Bruner charged Ricky Spears for that ride. <laughs> Ricky Spears the strong safety. He's 190 pounds but. 
didn't bother Mr. Bruner at all <laughs> in his last home game. He carried him about 10 yards. Flag going down on the line of scrimmage. Been a busy day for the officials. Don't you love that Frank Garcia in there. He's got his nose in there. What's going on? <laughs> He's one of those seniors. One of those 14 playing today. And you hope he could care less right now oh, no. about seniors. Looks like DeAndros kind of doesn't he? Well I'm telling you he's had a good game plan. <laughs> he's making yardage when the guys can hold on to the football. Offside on the defense decline. After the play dead ball personal foul on the defense 15 yard penalty automatic first down. Some frustration Sonny surfacing. Well it doesn't take long you know you're down 17 zip you look up in the scoreboard the team that's ahead of you by 17 points has 13 total yards. Andy Jacobs the defensive end for Gilby just a sophomore. He's got a sophomore a freshman senior and another sophomore on that front four. Young young people. Great talent but a lot to learn. First attempt with 25 Washington cashing in on big time opportunities. Richard Thomas gets five down near the 20 yard line where he is met by Jared Willard. The leading tackler in the Pac-10 the last two years and ranked number three this year. This has been a good play for the Huskies in recent Jared weeks. There's a good look at Jarrett Willard. He, that guy's a player. I'm telling you right now, Don. But coming in the ball game, Coach Dietrich felt that those quick hitters up front, Richard Thomas has gained a lot of yards and done a great job. Jarrett Willard, big-time player, had 19 tackles against Washington up here in 1992. Second down and six. Both receivers left. Hoffman going right and what a job coming up and filling in was number 47 the backup to Willard Kevin Cunningham Cunningham will split time with uh, Andre Rhodes uh, at that one linebacker position here it is again he's just eyeballing Napoleon just spying him and shooting a gap whichever side he flows to exactly Wholesale substitutions there by California. About five guys going in and five coming out. So short yardage situation or maybe a red zone situation. Well, it's third and seven. Third so and the seven. Bears going to be an obvious pass. Pass down. rushers, you got it. Third down and seven. Plenty of time. Flag goes down again, however. Leon Neal. Quite a collision on the 11-yard line where he is finally brought down, not out of bounds, however. But let's see what the flag is all about. Kevin Devine in there to stop him, along with James Stallworth, number 36. Leon's hurt. Offsides on the defense. Decline. First down. Huskies get the first down on the just outside the 11-yard line. So now two are hurt. Napoleon got banged up on that last one, and Leon Neal is down. Well, Napoleon's been nursing that turf toe for the last few weeks, and it really, you know, those things take a long time to get to get rid of, and uh, you can see he's in a lot of pain over there. Now, Leon Neal, when you're stood up like that and you're trying to drive, somebody invariably will go low on you. It's when your ribs are they're most vulnerable. Well, Rashawn Sheehy. Are you there? Yes, he is in the backfield right now. Number one. Well, this guy's got a lot of talent. He, does. he can fly in and uh, he's probably the anxious right now. Just the red shirt freshman with a lot of talent. First and ten for Washington. Gee, getting the call right off the bat. Another flag goes down thrown by an official in the secondary. As number 37 Maurice Johnson, one of the inside linebackers, makes the stop. The junior out of San Jose. And let's check with Pat Flood one more time. The hold on the dogs. I made a point with Coach Dietrich yesterday, Don. What happens is, you know, the running back is supposed to, have, let's say, the hole on the right hand side, and he decides to go to the left hand side. Well, the offensive linemen are left there to try and block the defensive linemen, and all of a sudden they're changing position. And where are your hands? They're up inside under the pad, they take off at the hole. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat first down. See if you can find it. Now, if he's usually turned this way, the running back is probably going to go to the right side of the center. He switches and goes the other way. We didn't see the hold there, but uh, that's uh, it. what happens, you know, you, the offensive lineman trying to engage the defensive player and you get stuck. Trevor Highfield there, blocking well. 
You can get a handful. You just can't pull them down with you. First and 19. For the bootleg. They go over side. Janowski down back to the 10. Almost the original line of scrimmage. Which was the 11. So they're now down to the 10-yard line. Janowski going against Ricky Spears. The strong safety. Good play action. Rashawn Sheehy with a good block on his fake. You can see it coming up right here. Fake to the right. Rashawn with a nice block right there. Damon, I'm sure Dave Janowski's wondering, what is this, a football they threw to me during a football game? It's been a long time, a dry spell. I think we'll all remember Damon Hewitt's week against California last year with those four interceptions, a fumble. But then he hit 12 of his last 14 to pull it out at the end. Second and eight, Richard Thomas. Can't go right, he's going to try left, but still he is brought down by Reagan Upshaw, number 91. Shows the speed right there, Reagan Upshaw. He's only 240 pounds, runs a 4740. And I thought Richard Thomas uh, actually was going to make it to the end zone. I did too. All bundled up right in the middle. <laughs> Jeez, no place to go. He bounces outside. Reagan Upshaw, just knowing what's going on, presence out there, and makes the tackle, throws him down. That's the only way to bring him down. If you go head to head, I'm going to put my money on Richard. I don't care how big the opponent is. Third down and nine. Third down and nine. Ball on the 11-yard line. Got to get inside the two for a first. Oh, run it. Inside. No. Going to get a flag. flag. No, no flag. No one flag. Of, one official had his hand in his pocket over there in the far sideline and said, oh, nobody else is calling. I guess I'll just leave it alone. Gerard Cherry was the man all over Dave Janowski. What's the number of that guy over there? <laughs> And we're not talking player, <laughs> folks. No. <laughs> so on third and nine, the incomplete pass. And back comes John Wales, who, as I said, is now number two in the Pac-10 in scoring and in field goals. Behind Steve McLaughlin of Arizona. This one will be a 27-yard field goal. And it is good. They call it officially a 28-yard field goal. And that follows yet another fumble, of course, by California. Edwards. And this time fails to get up to the 20 yard line gets up to the 18 where lawyer Malloy and Richie Chambers meet him. Here's the drive. 27 yard field goal. This is following the third fumble recovery by Lambeau's defense or kickoff return covered kickoff return coverage team. I'll get it yet. It's been a while since we've done a game together. Yeah, know, Sonny. We got to get back into this. Yeah we. <laughs> it's a good game to be at. Good rivalry. Keith Gilbertson, Jim Lambright, seniors' final game. That's good fun. And all purple and gold so far. Two and a half minutes to go, first quarter. First and ten from the 18. Rutherford. Again, pretty good yardage as he gets up to the 23 yard line. He was averaging a little over four yards per carry coming in as he gets five on this particular carry. His best game, 111 yards against San Diego State. So far, he has four carries, 35 yards. Steve Hoffman, we'll have to talk to Brother Dave, make sure the marriage proposal by this young man went okay this week. Second down and five. Wide receiver to each side. Right end to the right side. Tony Gonzalez, flag goes down. Got a man complete up to the 39-yard line. It goes down <laughs> hard. Is he Hani or Ways okay? Uh, lawyer Malloy will say yeah. hello. <laughs> lawyer, the number six tackler in the Pac-10, just drilled the man from Nigeria. Uh, Ways okay is looking around going, who hit me? What number was that? <laughs> Boom. Offside penalty against the Huskies. Offside against the Huskies. You know, you have to respect the speed of these young men. Uh, Wazeke was a 4-3-40. You know, you can't play too tight. But then again, their, their routes that they're running, are, they're breaking off sharply, going to the inside, and they've been wide open in the middle. 
And they're moving generally they've been moving the cup around too for the quarterback give him a fighting chance. First and 10 from the 39 yard line after they refuse the penalty. Checking off his bar. Again balanced with the wide receivers one on each side. Pick an option there's the pitch. Rutherford though hauled down from behind by Ink Aliaga and Ink showing some acceleration there to get to the sideline. Aliaga coming off a 10 tackle performance against San Jose has now moved up to number 11 of the Pac-10 in tackles for the year. Well Cal not having a lot of depth at quarterback I'm not sure they want to see Pat Barnes running that play very often. That's a real good point. Ziv Gottlieb is the backup. There. Although it looked like it was you know designed to be pitched it was not he was not looking to run the ball anyway. Second and five. The fullback who carries seldom that being Johnny Tavaki who had over just over 100 yards coming into this game and meeting him was Deke Devers. And boy is he going to be sore tomorrow morning. Tavaki really strong six foot 240 pounds sophomore out of Daly City near San Francisco. And they're probably fudging on that six feet. <laughs> <laughs> And Deke Devers struggled against Stanford, no question about it. In fact, David Ritchie's about the only one that had any progressive work or positive work last week against the Cardinal, as here they are short of the first down. Rutherford carrier and Lewis Jones, another senior, getting the lick. Good job by Lewis Jones to wrestle him down on the ground. Saw the, the flagpole over there for the first down and put him down. I did my job. Well, look at those arms. You should be able to wrestle them down. <laughs> I remember him in 92. First game of the year. We're down at ASU. Makes an interception. Runs it back for a touchdown. And there was a penalty. I'll never forget that. Uh, ooh, this kid's going to be good. Ryan Longwell. Good average. Over 40 yards. As Leon Neal appears to be okay. And will return the punt. Or try to. Low wobbly spiral from the 18. Good coverage by California as he gets it up to the 23 yard line and the first quarter has come to a conclusion. Been a good one for the guys in purple and gold as they host the Cal Bears. They're up 20 zip second quarter coming up after this. First and ten for the Huskies on the 24 yard line after the punt. Kaufman back into the ball game, sore turf toe and all. It's maybe three as he's hit by a host of Cal Bears. Heward is three of seven for 30 yards. Kaufman had all of five yards before that carry. Jim Lambright telling me the other night when he heard that. Heidi and, and Steve are going to be married. Says we already have a contract sworn and an affidavit, an oath, you name it, that the Huskies get all the kids <laughs> for athletics. And Chris Goldberg, yeah, yeah, everybody's waiting in line. Chris and Lambo, doesn't matter. Bob Bender, who knows? Second down and six. Great time. Oh, what a catch by Janowski! The ball well delivered and long before the cut was made by Dave. Gerard Cherry defending against David. A couple of catches now for Janowski. This is the way I love to see Damon Hewitt deliver the football. Step up and fire it with authority. Right when he great timing between those two. <laughs> what a reaction. Great job of finding the ball and a perfect pass so he could catch it. You know, coming in the ball game, you know, we had great success, you know, on third down conversions, a real high percentage. And Coach Dietrich wanted to get back to spread the ball around a little bit more. It's nice to see Janowski with the grab. Third down conversion up to almost 47% as Kaufman's having a tough day. Matt Flisby comes up from the free safety spot and hawk ties him. He's the senior out of Walnut Creek and was a wide receiver last year. Kaufman now six carries for 11 yards. Needs 36 to hit 
the four thousand mark and become the fortieth man in the nation to do so in ncaa football that's not counting bowl games if you include bowl games he's already at four thousand thirteen as i understand it. second down and eight from the forty five of washington just starting the second quarter Throwing all the way, and it's Bjornsson who is out of bounds. Nice job by Cherry getting him all beat. Oh. The feet come down. Close to being ridden out of bounds. Almost, but I. We'll see. <laughs> Cherry right on him. Let's get a good look here. Well, not a perfect. Uh, I don't know, Don. I, I think he was call. ridden out. <laughs> I think so, too. When you go up for the ball and you're three yards inside the field of play and all of a sudden you're out of bounds, uh, I, I think they missed that one. From the sideline, it looked okay, but you're right. From the end zone, a little different. I see Damon isn't throwing too much to the left. He's throwing a lot to the right. Seems to be throwing most of his passes to the right side. George is now number eight in career receptions at Huskyville. Hewitt's going to throw again on third down. No call again. It's Cherry against Bjornsson. So they got a little thing going today. Did a little in and out to, to the corner. And really, I think the pass was not exactly where it needed to be because it looked that uh, there was no way he's going to get there. A little safety blitz there. Yeah, he didn't know whether to rush or to go back or try to bat at the ball. Cherry did an outstanding he job, did. though, maintaining his position there. Good position. Jeff Prince back to punt again. He's punting to the back 10's leader. Oh, possible block. I don't know if they might have gotten a piece of that one. A Husky roll, to say the least. Oh, look at this. Inside the 10. Out of the seven yard line. For the fifth time this year, Prince is able to put it inside the 10. 48 yard punt by Jeff Prince. And I'm still not sure if anyone might have batted it. First and 10. Ball on the seven yard line. As Rutherford carries, gets out maybe to about eh, maybe one yard. Lawyer Malloy in there along with Lyons. They give him three yards. Tell you what, Lawyer Malloy is playing inspired football today. He's coming up and delivering blow after blow. Leads the team with 86 tackles this year. 54 of those all by himself. I'll tell you the cow running backs going up in the hole or wrapping that thing up with both arms. A little hard to be explosive down here in this part of the territory, having to wrap it up with both hands and right. be careful. They do now. Second down and seven. Four turnovers is enough. Rutherford again. Nice blocking scheme. Gets up. Close to the first down. Stopped by David Kilpatrick along with Lions, number 25. Approximately seven yards on the carry, so it'll be very close. Yes, first down. At flood, the referee saying, move the chain to the west, young men. Lamar already with that 38 yard fumble recovery for its touchdown in the first quarter, which made it 14 to nothing. Oh, the weather gods are being good to us today. The rain and snow and sleet that we saw this morning is not here. It's chilly and it's a little windy. Steve Hoffman doesn't mind. <laughs> what a great look. Last thing he's thinking about, <laughs> huh? As they keep it inside and play conservative, and that makes sense. That deep in their own territory. John Fiala along with Jason Chory against Rutherford. Troy will play a lot of football next year, just the redshirt freshman. On the depth chart, he's backing up Donovan Smith, but also Deke Beavers. Out of Vashon, Washington, and Vashon High School. He's building up well. He's up to 6'4", 260. I remember watching him in spring football this past year. Everybody was impressed. Look at the numbers. Unbelievable. That's what turnovers will do. Oh, boy, it sure will. Second and eight with a wide receiver. Two to the right. Here's that screen pass again. We've seen so many schools go with. We had that one defense pretty well. We've seen it enough in the last four or five ball games. <laughs> Jason Turing was able to find Rutherford. Only a two-yard game. Just a quick three-step drop. Get rid of the football. Oh, 
Uh, good thing he wasn't Boy. hit. Very close. Jamie German of Miami made that famous early against Arizona State out here on the West Coast. Now Gilby's taking it on too. Gilby was talking about against Washington State when they had no quarterbacks. He said, I'm literally bending over, pointing on the AstroTurf. Okay, you go here, you go there, you go here. Third down and six. Complete and good for the first down to the 39 yard line is again Marty Gaskin. He's something else and hasn't played all that much. Boy, we talked about the speedy starters and Gaskin's coming in and <laughs> making all the grabs. You've got to admire what Pat Barnes is doing here. Look in the field. And one thing coming into the game, you see where his head was, Don? This was not his primary receiver. His primary receiver is on the left. And that's one thing coming in that they, he does his progression properly. First read, second read, third read. Just wondering if Gaskin's always the third read because of the two other good wide receivers or not. Got to keep an eye on it. Edwards trying to zig and zag, and the Huskies fill in for the kill. That's Malloy and Reeser make the stop. Kaufman has gone into the locker room, we're told, for x rays on that toe. Lambo said they were going to have to put another stiffener in his shoe to help him, but uh, sounds like it has bothered him, and Limbo, Lambo sent him in to check out that toe with an X-ray. Second down in 12 for California with 9.07 remaining in the second quarter. Sonny Six Killer, I'm Don Poyer. Dave Hoffman, James Clifford on the sideline. Under. Yep, sent a man underneath, but he was covered well. Now nobody there finally gets to one of his tailbacks. Rutherford making something out of nothing as he gets back up to the 41 yard line. Gain of maybe four or five yards. Lamar Lyons makes the tackle. He's got some moves, hasn't he? Sonny? He sure does. But Pat Barnes is the one I've been impressed with here. He's yeah. been setting his feet right, slipping outside, always looking back underneath. Those can be very dangerous throws. Steve Hoffman was hoping he'd be there in time to make the grab for an interception. Good tackle by Lamar Lyons. Got a timeout call here by California with 821 remaining. Second quarter, and we'll be back in a moment. A 21 remaining here in the second quarter and the Huskies up 20 zip last home game for 14 Huskies been a tough one for Napoleon Kaufman he's up in the locker room with an x-ray on that toe that is not how he wanted to end oh. the day bad snap by the center Lynch nice recovery by Barnes and they're saying incomplete Niall Benjamin the intended receiver What do you think, Sonny? The coverage has been so good on Benjamin and a ways okay that that's why Gaskins has been open so much, or is he the third receiver? I, it's hard to tell. Well, I think what's coming, what happened, oh, yeah, it looked like he trapped that one. Coming in the ball game, he wanted to keep the young quarterback in the pocket, give him some pressure, cover their speedy wide receivers, and don't let them get the big plays on you. And what happens when you compensate for them? They've been playing the three wide receiver set. Bad snap. Longwell does a nice job of just getting rid of it. Well, that young man has had a tough, tough year. <laughs> As we had told you earlier, four block punts. They've had trouble finding a deep snapper. The man this time was Matt Loggins, number 61. Way up. Did a great job of just keeping it in front of him and had the composure, Sonny. Oh, boy, I tell you. Last week, the young man has bounced back. He had eight punts for almost a 50-yard average, 48.8. Now, unfortunately today you can't do much unless you get the snap properly. Huskies with again great field position. They lead 20 zip here in the second quarter. First and 10 of the 47 of California. Safety blitz. Uh -oh. Interception and that is going to be six. 
Matt Flisby has a touchdown for California. There is one turnover returned into the bank, and Keith Gilbertson is on the board. Flisby with his first interception of the year, and it's good for 57 yards and six. They'll play action fake here. They had a safety blitz coming in. Damon had to alter his throw right there because of the defender's hand. Lisby stepped in for the uh, interception. But when you're back there in that pocket, you know, if you have a free lane, you can follow through. As you can see, Damon did not have a chance to follow through on the pass, and it hung out there. Longwell gets a chance now. Oh, what a play. Washington had it for the third time to start a series in California territory and it turns into the 57 yard interception and touchdown by Fisby. So now it is 20 to 7. It had to be a perfect pass to begin with when you're throwing it out in the flat like that and anytime you have a, a person's hand a defender's hand or helmet something in your way where you can't follow through and down on it it's going to hang and uh, that's what happened right there. Lisby, who was a wide receiver last year, Sonny, took one year to play on the other side of the line of scrimmage, returned to defense this year, and he was one of the best return men in the conference last year. Right there, if you got, you got a chance to see it right there, uh, Lisby, of course, was right with Janoski out of the way, and it really had to be a perfect pass on the outside. Matt McKessie couldn't get him and didn't have the angle. He needs to practice that high step a little bit. <laughs> Never got to do it. <laughs> He was a good return man, however. Well, maybe this will be a good wake up call for the Washington offense. They haven't been doing much so far today, and uh, sometimes a turnover can turn you up. For Mr. Clisby, the history major, just made some for the Cal Bears. 7.58 remaining in the second quarter. And Keith Gilbertson strikes back. And you want to get as close as you can, certainly, going into halftime if you're a Cal Bear. Cal really going in has scored many of their points in the first quarter. That was their best quarter by far throughout the year. Look at Gilby talking to those officials. <laughs> working. He's working all of them. That's a 75 points in the first quarter. 44 in the second, 17 in the third, and 33 in their fourth. So first quarter's always been their best, but we're in the second here before they finally break the ice. And it began with the bad snap to this man, Ryan Longwell, who kicks off to Rashawn Sheep. And I believe it's Leon Neal down there with it. Good high kick. Sheehy from the six. Looking for the lane. And good return up to Excellent. the 33-yard line and a nice wedge by Jerry Jensen and the rest of the Huskies up there leading the way. 26-yard return for Sheehy. Who had eight coming in to this contest with a long of 22. So he's got a, a career-high return there for the youngster. Sheehy out of Bakersfield, California. Leon Neal, however, now plays a tailback with the injured Kaufman. First attempt from the 32. Neal spins, goes, and down he goes as Gerard Cherry meets him number 30. Ooh, maybe I won't spin next time. Good gain on first down, though, Don. Very good gain. Up to the 38-yard line. Husky offense needs to start churning out some yards and getting some yards, positive yards. Boy, turnover return yards. Yeah, I was yeah. Say, forget total offense. We'll just <laughs> points and yards off turnovers today. Be a great TV game. Guess that's what we're doing. <laughs> Second down and four. Richard Thomas looks like the Huskies will have a free one as the flag goes down to the line. You saw the movement. Jared Willard and Maurice Johnson were on the tackle. Might have been Andy Jacobs, number 40, moving too soon, the right defensive end. Two-yard gain by Thomas. And the Huskies say it is indeed on California. If they take it, it's going to say it should yes. be a first down, so take it. 
for Keith Gilbertson. Saw his defensive end move a little too soon. Animated guy on the sidelines, always has been. To finish the point, I was saying they had to, like, with their fingers on the carpet, diagram the offense against Arizona, or, Cal or Washington State, rather. He says, what's amazing is we were moving the ball on the best defense in the nation by doing that <laughs> with a wide receiver playing quarterback. They swing it out. Left side to Leon Neal. And basically gets back to the line of scrimmage. Nice pursuit by Cal. Artis Houston leading the charge, number 19. Husky saw that last week, though, Don. You know, Stenstrom goes down with an injury, and yes. in comes Mr. Frost and runs all over the place and uh, really had an outstanding game against the dog. Leon Neal will certainly get the best shot of being the starting tailback next year. Damon is now 7 of 12 with the one pick so far. Second down and 10. Good protection, going deep. Almost picked up by Ricky Spears, number 52, the strong, or 42, the strong safety. And he already has three picks this year. Eric Bjornsson was not even close to being open on that play. Ricky Spears, the drop back in coverage. See a good look here at Cherry, number 30 of the Bears. Knows he has inside help right there, and there he is, 42. Almost looked like he was trying to lob it over Spears, but too much speed on Ricky's part. Yeah, and Cherry was actually in position to make a play if it did get there. One and five. Twenty percent on third down conversion today. No. Flag goes down late back yeah. towards the backfield, which tells you Trevor Highfield made a tackle. Yeah. <laughs> Probably a hold on the guys in purple it is. Cal may just decline this. Since it was third down, and I think Lambeau sent his putting team out there. Damon struggled here the last couple series. Right guard Trevor Highfield right there. <laughs> Wrestling down to the ground. And it is declined. Here's Trevor. Steve Morton telling him what. Trevor already knows. I feel one of the people returning. He's just a junior. Remember he made the conversion to defense from last year and has done an outstanding job playing next to Andrew Peterson as Jeff Prince is back to punt. It's been a really tough week for Jeff Prince, one of his best friends. Shot down in Los Angeles near Long Beach in a drive-by incident. It has recovered well. This punt low and wobbly, but maybe they'll get another good roll. <laughs> boy, what a gamble that boy took. Kyle Benjamin <laughs> rolling the dice as the ball was rolling on the carpet. Boy. And he got lucky. Let's take a break. We'll return in just a moment. No return. Five fifty-five remaining in the second quarter. California, the only ones to draw blood here in the second. And they have it first and ten from the twenty-five. Barnes, pressure from behind. Donovan Smith can't get him. Finally gets it away to the tight end. Sean Bullard, first down at the thirty-seven. Uh -oh, the quarterback is down. Barnes slow to get up on the twenty-yard line. Be all right. Absolutely got flat, but again, Pat Barnes doing an outstanding job of avoiding the rush. Coming in, the coaches want to keep him in the pocket. Little play action pass here. Had it well covered downfield. Nobody was open. Donovan Schmidt, I believe that's twice today, he's been in a position to make a sack and not being able to quite do it. David Ritchie down on top of him, as you see Lewis Jones, number 31, on the play on the other end. That's worked well where they go play action go back the other direction to the tight end Sean Bullard in this case good defense by the Huskies until they make the adjustment and they get the first down at 12 yards on this carry it's Tyrone Edwards for three yards. 
Five twelve remaining first half. Uh -oh. Flags go down. The play clock was not of concern. Plenty of time on it. Some movement evidently. Pat Flood's been busy today. He has. A lot of PT. For the snap, ball start on the offense. Still second down. A couple of wiggles on the part of the Bears. Gilby's not happy, I'm sure, with a second and 12 situation here when you're down by 13 points. I've been impressed with this Pat Barnes, though, I'll tell you, Don. He's, uh, he's quite a player. Me too. Second down, 12 yards to go. The Talking with some of the Bear coaches there. Very impressed how Gilby has held everybody together despite the adversity in the three and six season. Three and six season. Ink Kaliaga. Fire in that man's eyes. On second down and 12. Barnes. How about the hole? Plenty of time. Rifles the ball over to Patrick Young, who is a transfer from Santa Clara University. Reggie Reeser was there, number four. Too high. I said, how about the hold? It looks like <laughs> Bring it up again, Sonny. Well, you know, <laughs> Look like the Cal people had a few hands out there. Barnes out of Mission Viejo. Coming into this game had not and still hasn't passed for a touchdown, but had no interception. So the first one that he's ever suffered. Went for 79 yards in a TD. Holding right there. Look at that. Woo. Finally, gone. they called it. And so does the referee. He goes down. As he throws to Ihani Oezeke. I don't think this is going to be a touchdown, though. Boy, Lewis Jones, my gosh. Yeah, he knew it. Don't think it's going to be of any concern. And there are no Bears cheering right now on the sidelines. So you'll be no. <laughs> You know, they described Oezeke as being gazelle type. Watch Lewis Jones. Right. Oh, look at that. I can't even get away. <laughs> look at that jersey. He's even doing it to the ref. Say, look, look. And the ref had to fight for his life. Pat Flood, <laughs> David Gilpatrick with a 3 5 on the front of that truck. Rutherford, I think, was the blocker who was going against Lewis Jones. There's a great shot. Good yeah. job by the camera people. <laughs> that was absolutely great. But I tell you, I was going to say that the Oasis Cage looked like the gazelle. That uh, I heard descriptions of him like that. Uh, somebody described him as that. Yeah. Uh, after he caught that ball, boy, can he fly. How about the job uh, that Barnes did for Gilby on that pass? He wasn't the one that held. He was the one out fighting for his life. That's right. Third down and 36. Yep. 36. Ball on the 12-yard line. They got to go conservative now against that Husky defense. And still Rutherford gets up to the 23. Didn't just you just know, didn't you just know they were going to run a draw on that? Yeah, <laughs> Sometimes you look at these formations, shot again. Hey, here comes the draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, you're a quarterback, Sonny. You've been there. <laughs> I'd say throw that long. Man? What the heck? <laughs> yeah, sure, it's easy for you. <laughs> yeah. Longwell, nice punt. Nose comes over deep. Almost out punted his coverage. Here comes Leon Neal. Flag oh. goes down as he gets up to midfield. Flag went down way behind him. Oh, I have to disagree with this call. Mr. Parrish, they say. Kevin Cunningham on the tackle. Is that what you're thinking? Tony Parrish, maybe? Yes. Look clean to me. Flood's on back. the return, illegal block in the back by the return team. Ten yard penalty for spotting the foul. First down. Oh boy. Ten yard illegal block in the so back. So it goes back to the 26 yard line of Washington. First down, ten yards to go. Like we said, the weather has cooperated. Mother Nature, thank you, thank you, thank you. Toes aren't even numb yet, Sonny, and it's <laughs> almost halftime. First to 10 from the 26 after the illegal block. Yorkson, first down on first down. Goes out of bounds at the 37 yard line, and they'll get another four to work with. 
three twenty five remaining first half james stallworth was there number thirty six they call him too tall stall just a five yard settle down give me the ball let eric do the rest of it so i'm not quite a bit this year cherry two with the hit and he has been busy they've really gone after gerard cherry today First and ten for the Huskies. Both Janowski and the wide receivers to the left. Leon Neal carries left tackle. Nice job. Fights his way up to the 50-yard line and a first down. Leon Neal saying, this is what I can do on a full-time basis, and I'll be back next year to do it. Gerard Cherry again on the tackle with Andre Rhodes, number 11. The best thing about this play is Leon Neal's getting a chance to carry the football, but watch at the end here when people are starting to hit him. He keeps those legs driving and driving. That is just great to see, and it's a tribute to uh, Rick Hughley, the strength coach here at the Huskies, as well as their national talent. First and ten. Right back to Bjornsson, going against guess who, Mr. Cherry. This time, nothing. Break even. Nice play by Cherry. No game. I hope we don't continue doing this play very much. Uh, Mr. Cherry starting to zero in on this one. Yeah, he saw it coming. Second down, nine yards to go for the Huskies. That ball seemed to float out there a little bit, in my opinion, but uh, Eric did a good job of making the catch. Tight end looked open at that one. Ernie Conwell. Yeah, I think Damon sometimes gets zoned in so much on Eric because he's such an outstanding pass runner, route runner, I should say. Second and nine. Can he get outside against Jared Willard? Oh, my goodness. That is why he's rated one of the best linebackers in the nation. Deceptively fast, Don. He doesn't look like he gets anywhere that quick, but, boy, when he has to, he can get there. 82 tackles coming in. Here's what he's done against the Huskies. Nine against them in 91 when he was a freshman. 19 in 92. Eight last year, but four were tackles for losses in the backfield. He also had an interception, two fumbles caused, and a fumble recovery against the Huskies last year. Well, I'm sure that uh, Mr. Hoffman and Clifford uh, down there will appreciate the play of Jared Willard. I don't think they wanted to talk about him, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Five TOs have accounted for all 27 points in this game. They're down in seven for the Huskies. Is Mark Bruner on the field? Yes, he's blocking. Cal showing blitz as they try to go to Gurney. Conwell slips out of bounds at the 23. And that's exactly the pattern that he ran earlier on the other side when he went to Bjornsson for no game. That one was open. Dante DePaulo made the stop. See Ernie on the left side of the screen in the route for sure. Mark Bruner had to stay in and block on this play. Oh, but he just kept his footing. But it's a little tough when the field slopes down and away from you. That probably broke even because DePaula slipped too, which allowed Ernie to get wide open. Ernie will be the starting tight end next year, more than likely. One of them. First to ten. Leon getting a workout today. Tries to cut back, and the pursuit closes in. Reagan Upshaw, one of the first ones there, number 91. He'll have stiff competition with Cam Cleveland next year, if you can remember, remember where he's going. <laughs> Poor Cam. Yeah, what a tough hit last week against Stanford. Uh, hope he's okay. Be back next week in the final game of the year. The one that was most frightening is when he, they got done to the team meeting in the locker room after the Stanford game and just sat there. Coach asked him what's wrong. He says, I don't know where my locker is. Touchdown. Ernie Conwell, touchdown, Washington. Got away from Daryl Miles, the backup safety. As Ernie picks up his second touchdown of 1994. Had that 37 yarder earlier this season. What, against UCLA, I believe, or San Jose State? <laughs> There's a good look. Straight drop back. Safety coverage. You say Mr. Miles forgot where Ernie Conwell was. <laughs> One of the fastest and definitely the strongest player on this team. It's pressing around 470. As Ernie with the strength and the speed to match. And they'll go for two. Leading 26-7. Two receivers right. Got to get rid of it. Gets into the corner. Leon Neal with plenty of time to think about it. Nice play by Damon Hewitt on both the TD and the two. Scott Linehan right there to congratulate him. 
wide receiver coach. And that's the first points here in the second quarter. By Washington. Here's a good look done. A little play action pass. Somebody forget to pick. They forgot to pick up Leon Neal. There he is. Kevin Cunningham. <laughs> well, I think I had number 12, but where'd he go? A minute 30 here in the first half. As John Wales will kick off for Coach Jim Lambright, who's 2 0 against the Bears. Family at 1 0 last year in the first meeting. Hopes to be 2 0. One of the up men gets it up to the 35 yard line, where John Fiala's on top of the pile anyway. And Pat Barnes will return for the final minute and 27 seconds here in the first half. Ernie Conwell, by the way, a couple of catches for 47 yards and the one TD. So Ernie has had a big, big day already with a 23 yard TD. Nice tandem of tight ends there, huh? Bruner, Conwell. I'd like to be the manager for all of them. I'm talking <laughs> financial. Manager. Oh, that manager. Okay. First and ten from the 36. Well, they've got great futures ahead of them. Edwards from the shotgun, and they keep it down, and will be more than happy to run the clock. That I would imagine. Minute 16 remaining, first half. Get back into the locker room and regroup. That was the touchdown that probably hurt Cal here in the first half was this last one of 23 yards to Ernie Conwell. They had the big interception cut at 20 to 7 hoping to maybe cut it even more and then uh, Huskies go right back. Two big plays to Mr. Conwell. Yes. Second and nine. And they will go upstairs. A ways okay short of the first however. Russell Hairston and Jerry Jensen. In on the kill, number 40, and Ihani comes up popping. I tell you, I, I love watching these cow receivers. They look their the ball in their hands so well. Good coverage by Russell. Last time Russell will be out here as a Husky in a ball game. Third down and two. Wide receiver to each side, and now wisely. Keep it on the carpet as Edwards rambles down to the 45 yard line of Washington is good for a first. And they do want to stop. I was going to say they ought to try to get something out of this if they get this close. Sure. Their kicker, by the way, Ryan Longwell, has attempted field goals from a, as far away as 57 yards. The last time he tried it was against the Cougars, and it was long enough. It just was wide to the right. They need to pick up at least another 10 yards to get even that close. As Ryan Longwell really struggled early in the year going four of 13. But then hitting three of his last five coming into this contest and one of those five was from 57. So call it three of four. The 57 yard attempt happening at the very end of their game against Washington State in Berkeley two weeks ago. Well, he does have a little bit of wind at his back. Yeah. They we're going to try. It's be a very long kick, though. Yeah, they, uh, let's see, the ball on the 45, so it's 55 at 62 right now. So they need at least another 5 to 10 yards. My toes are just about numb. Now, so <laughs> They're getting there, huh? The penny loafers are not giving me my money's worth. <laughs> As Lambeau and Gilby, they have more fun getting back and forth about going out and having a root beer. They used to battle each other back and forth. Gilby would say, I'm going to do this on offense. How would you stop me on defense? That was back when they were on the same coaching staff. Pat Barnes, several Huskies giving chase, and that's going to end the first half. Been a good one for the Washington Huskies as they cash in. On four different turnovers by California, they rack up 28 points and lead it 28 to 7 here at intermission. We'll return to Husky Stadium after this.
five turnovers and a 28 to 7 score at halftime here at Husky Stadium the last home game of the year Don Boyer Sunny six killer let's get into the highlights because they're pretty <laughs> amazing There's one off great highlight. play out of all of them this really got things going when California was threatening but a 79 yard interception and return for touchdown by well, Roger Reeser well good pressure on the quarterback Pat Barnes and that's a kid with a lot of no experience I should say uh, good job by Reggie Reese to step in and make the interception that was the first of four Cal turnovers here came the next one when Raynard Rutherford goes up and again big yardage by Cal but it goes right into the hands of Lamar Lyons well I'll tell you what lawyer Malloy has been making big hits all year and there was another example of a big hit and uh, creating the turnover 38 yard return for the touchdown you want another fumble we got one for you <laughs> stay tuned Matt Clisby who soon evens the record a little later, loses the ball, stripped by Richie Chambers. Great job by the defense. You want another turnover? <laughs> we got one here, Sean Buller, the tight end. Oops. Tony Parrish. Is, there you go, that is the fourth. But Matt Clisby, the man who fumbled earlier, ooh, he evened the score here. <laughs> he had to get it even and made Coach Gilbertson happy of the Bears. That made it. 20 to 7, and then a real live offensive play, in this case, a pass to Ernie. Good job by Damon to look off the DBs. Good job by Ernie to catch the ball. Ernie Conwell with a touchdown, his second of the year, and you see the numbers rushing yards only 35 yards for the Huskies. They're all time low, or not all time, but single season low, 130 some yards, 121 yards against Miami. Well, so. Cal's had, you know, six minutes of uh, possession time more than us, and so. They've been on the field a little bit longer. All right, let's go down to the sidelines with Dave and James. Guys? Guys, down here on the sideline, what a first half. And we saw Napoleon Kaufman. We all saw him going to the locker room early. That turf toe is really bothering him. It's going to be real interesting to see if he's going to come back and play. He's hobbling, but he's tough, let me tell you. Yeah, the turnovers were a big factor in the first half, you guys were saying. But the Huskies are going to build on that last drive. The tight ends really got involved in the passing game. And you know at halftime, the coaches emphasize that. And they're going to get him going again. Back up to you guys. Okay, guys, we did get word that the uh, the uh, x-rays were negative for Napoleon, and he will be back in the second half. Let's get to that right after this. Time to start the third quarter. Don Poyer along with Sonny Six Killer, James Clifford, and Dave Hoffman. California will kick off after Washington had won the toss and deferred. Leon Neal from the goal line. Gets outside. Can he get outside of the containment? Not quite. All the way up, though, to the 34 yard line. Good field position. As the Huskies start the third quarter. Huskies with 35 yards rushing in the first half. That's the lowest of the year by far. Don't you love looking at that wedge form up there in front? Leon Neal did a good job busting it outside. The only place to go. He's got tremendous speed. You know, people, uh, you know, you always think about Napoleon's speed, but Leon Neal can flat out get there too. Huskies spreading it out well offensively in terms of pass receivers. There were five people, four of the five, caught two passes each. So a lot of folks getting into it. Andy Jacobs jumps a little too soon. Number 40 for California as Leon Neal was the ball carrier, but I think it is a moot point as Andy Jacobs, the sophomore out of Benicia. He in there too soon. He has 11 tackles for loss this year. That's the impressive thing about Jacobs and his teammates on the front line, Sonny, is they have so many tackles for loss. All of them, 11, 9, 8, 15 for Upshot. Well, included in that is uh, they include their sacks and all that. So Upshot, for example, seven and a half sacks, and Andy Jacobs was five. And being a former linebacker, he's just itching to go down there. <laughs> They've had about three offsides today. First and five after the penalty. Two receivers left. 
Look familiar. It's what Cal's been using. Go to the tight end. Go against the trend. This time to Ernie Conwell. They do get the first down up to the 47-yard line where he's stopped by Gerard Cherry. I'd like to see the defensive charts because Cherry has to have 15 tackles by now. <laughs> Cal's always been a big hitting defensive squad. Back even when I played, they were, we had always knew going to the ball game that they were going to ring your bell. Good job there going to the man that settled down underneath. They were wanting to go to Mark Bruner downfield, but he was covered like a blanket, no place to throw. First and 10 from the 47 for Washington as we're just coming out of the locker room. Still no sign of Napoleon Kaufman. Richard Thomas gets a couple of well earned yards. The x rays were negative for Napoleon and that turf toe and does hope to return. Reagan Upshaw in on the tackle with Greg Webb against Big Richard. <laughs> I just love that look at Richard Thomas. You know, he's such an intense ball player, such a great family man. You know, he's going to college, going to graduate early. Coming. Great story. Coming out of the Stanford game last week, we were wondering what Lambeau would say positively about that game, and still many bouquets thrown Richard's way for his consistent play and hard work. Second down and seven. Little play action going across the middle. It's got Bjornsson knocked away and knocked away well by number 19, Artis Houston. Well, he's their best cover guy. You can see how he can close on the ball so quickly. But the thing is, he was playing. You know, you play the hash marks, you play the numbers. He was just settled back there. Maybe we get a good look at it here. Ricky Spears releasing him downfield. Artis Houston coming off the corner. It looked like Greg Casada stopped out there. You know, sometimes the other receivers got a hold the corner and he had time to break on the ball and as you were pointing out too Don that uh, the ball was a little bit of a floater getting out there. Looks like it just a bit. Third down and seven. Comes the pressure and down he goes Reagan Upshaw number 91 the sophomore defensive end with another sack that being his eight. He has eight and a half for the year. I would imagine the pep talk by Gilby and the Bears was one of don't make mistakes and we're right back in this one. Great, great rush. Uh, that time he got the better part of Andrew Peterson. Well, you know Cal's going to come out fired up. You know sure. Gilby's a fiery kind of coach anyway. He, you know he's, he's got the, he has all the great sayings and all the right words to say and he'll be fired up to play. A couple of people back off now on the punt defense and now California with a fair catch called at the 23 yard line by Niall Benjamin so no return but we do have a flag down back on the line of scrimmage we'll get the word once again from Pat Flood and the hold on Washington Boy, you hate to see that, Don. You pointed it out too that they were just falling off to go back and help set up a, a blocking return. scheme on a return, excuse me, and uh, yeah, I'd like to see right. the replay. Huh. Fritz had one close one when he was punting. In fact, it looked like it might have been deflected, but they got a great roll down to inside the 10. And Jim Lambright also trying to find out what the word is. I still have a tough time getting used to watching Lambeau on one side and Gilby on the other and it not being the purple and gold spring game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just I'm just it's hard to get used to seeing purple these two versus the whites going head to head here. Uh, yeah. It's usually with yeah, Don James up here with us and <laughs> watching those two go Holding ahead. on the kicking team. Ten yards in the previous spot. Repeat fourth down. So Jeff Prince with plenty of green to really root one now. As he'll go clear back to his at least his 20 in fact inside of that. Jeff with a 37 and a half yard average and he's looking eye to eye with the best returner in the Pac-10 number 21 in the nation Niall Benjamin number four. Good snap by Garcia. Bad punt however off the side of his foot and very wobbly. Could be a good roll. Yeah, not this time. As John Fiala gets the ball and brings it to rest. Just short of the 35-yard line. So 
That's where they'll take over. So they gained the 10 yards off the penalty and uh, they gained about 10 yards on that. Well, on as I would change. say, that, and that's a first down. So that's four plays they didn't have to execute to get the first. <laughs> one way to look at it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one way. That's one first down they didn't have to get to keep the drive alive. Barnes looks left, now has to go to an alternate receiver and finally goes to Rutherford. Nice yardage up to the 43 yard line. They give him seven yards before David Ritchie makes the tackle. David Ritchie out of Kelso, and he is only a sophomore. You'll see Ritchie, Iwaliko, Steve Hoffman, Suki Wiggs, Deke Devers, Justin Thomas. Those guys are all back this year. All the folks. Speaking of Everett, up front. Kelso High taking on Cascade High next weekend. Big one. Second and three. Rutherford short of the first. And just short. Ink Kaliaga got him by the Cavs as he hauled him down. Raynard's best game, 111 yards. They also had, uh, I guess, San Diego State, as I mentioned earlier, but 98 against UCLA. Student body seats still available. Third down and one. That and 333, which is pretty close to their season average for third down conversion. And don't think he made it. No way. Lamar Good. Lyons, one of the first one there. He's played well today. We've called his name quite often. Cal needed to get up to the really the 45 and they'll measure. Looks like he's if the lines are straight he might be short by about an inch. Looks like he's going to be short. Good job by the down lineman right there getting penetration. Steve Hoffman there at the bottom doing what he's supposed to do disrupt the blocking. Tyrone Edwards carrying the ball you're right. Yeah they're short by more than that good six inches. What? <laughs> Six go. Don't look at me that way. <laughs> McGilvy sends his punter out there again, Ryan Longwell. It's been a bit of an adventure on punts with his deep snapper, Matt Loggins. Still maintaining a good average, however. It's a good move by Gilby. The Husky offense has only generated one touchdown today, you know, on a field goal off another turnover, but. Uh, you know, too early in the third quarter to really go for this. One. That is the first three and out for California today. Just under 11 minutes to go, third quarter. Good snap this time. Longwell looks for the right side, trying to get it away from Neal. Didn't work. Gets it on the 19. Finds an opening. Cuts back. A lot of white jerseys, but he gets to the 33 yard line. Good return, though, Don. Very good. good. He came into the ball game. Averaging about five yards per return, and he got 15 on that last effort. 38 yard punt by Longwell, so it's first and 10 from the 33 of Washington. Second series for the Huskies here in the second half as Bjornsson comes out wide to the right side with two tight ends. One tight end, two, because <laughs> they're both going into pattern. And Ewart is rocked out of bounds. David Ewart keeping the ball. They have lost one or two. Loss of two. Both Conwell and Bruner were into the secondary that time, along with Bjornson. Sunshine. Never thought we'd see that today. No, you're right. It was awful this morning, but uh, I tell you what, Damon Hewer did a good job. He didn't try and force the ball in there that last play, and Jacobs, of course, forced him out of bounds. But hey, we'll take that. Let's go have second down. This time, Janoski comes out in the slot. They keep it on the ground to Leon Neal. Gets maybe two Leon up to the 35 yard line, where Jared Willard meets him along with Brandon Whiting. No sign of Napoleon. I don't know if he's on the sidelines or he's still in the locker room. Third down, eight yards to go for the Huskies. Can't see him with the naked eye anyway as you see Damon coming out. And 
he has a third and eight to take care of. Double tight ends and a wide receiver to each side. Total balance. Swings it out. Leon. Oh, my, gets the first down and is still going. He could go the distance if he could get away. Oh, he, he fumbled. fumbled the ball. Oh, my goodness. What did he do? I saw him hesitate a moment. I thought, no, he couldn't have lost the ball. He's all by himself. Oh, jeez. Oh my. Boy, he's got to be disappointed in himself. He had a touchdown. Yeah, he had six. I wonder why he was running towards that cow man all of a sudden. Oh, he bumped into his own man. He bumped in the air. Bjornsson. Patrick Kessie downfield to get the ball. As he played by the starting guard, strong side guard for the Huskies. Leon Neal did an outstanding job, though, to get out of oh, that. I didn't think he had any chance of getting the first down marker. Then he's supposed to making the touchdown. 31 yard play. Leon again and picks up maybe four. Let's look at it again. This is the finest effort of the year, I think, for Leon rushing the ball. I again, probably, a throw out on the flat. We've done a lot this year. Good move right there. Just leg drive. You know, we brought that up earlier in the ball game where he doesn't stop running. He keeps those legs moving right there. Whoops. Oh, boy. You know, he hadn't been in that situation before, Don, as a Husky, I don't believe, out there in the open for running around. Not in the ball game, anyway. Leon now in rushing, six for 24 yards, three receptions for 45 yards. Second down. Hewitt gets away. No, not for long. As he's brought back down to the 32-yard line, that'll be a loss of a couple of yards. Brandon Whiting and Reagan Upshaw. They're part of what they call the pipeline in California, meaning your biceps. You have to have 19-inch biceps to be a part of this sack group. They do give Whiting an exemption, though. His are only 18. I'll have that in about two weeks. Yeah, that's all I can measure my thigh more quickly. No, no. Get an 18. Both of them. <laughs> yeah. You know, one thing about the Husky offense, they're running kind of a flood with everybody going to the far side. It'd be an opportune time to drag somebody underneath to give them a different look and let them sneak underneath. Try it on third down and nine. And over the head as the pass rush on Upshaw was, or by Upshaw, was severe to say the least. And overthrown was this man, Eric Bjornsson. One more game after this one. To the Palouse to take on the Posse. The Cougs. So the Huskies now will have to punt in this one as Damon didn't connect with Bjornsson. Bjornsson was short anyway if the first down had he caught it. Chance right now, though, to pin California to their back door. Way too hard. Way too hard. Don't think that's what Jeff wanted to do. And the crowd didn't want it either. We'll be back. 7.46 remaining. Third quarter. There's your time remaining in the third. Jim going conservative, trying to pin California, but the punt was too long by Jeff Prince, so it'll be first and 10 on the 20 yard line for California, trailing 28 to 7. Barnes wanting to go for it all as Uwezuke was testing Reggie Reeser. Reggie had great position on him, just did an outstanding job staying with the speedster. 4 3 40. Oazuke's family moved to the United States from Nigeria 14 years ago and grew up as a youngster in Inglewood, California, went to Harvard High School, and then the rest is history as he joined California a couple of years ago. He's only a junior. Same thing, well, Niall Benjamin's even a year younger. He's a sophomore, so their wide receivers are back next year. And Pat Barnes was second and ten with the draw to... Raynard Rutherford who gets up to the 23 yard line still well short of the first as David Kilpatrick was there and closed down nicely. David Kilpatrick on the stop. 
this has been a good play for Cal. First half, they made some big yardage on it. Unfortunately, on one of those carries, he fumbled the ball. But Rutherford here carrying the ball in his right hand, you know, that makes it <laughs> makes it tough. You know, it makes it good for a linebacker. I mean, our opportunities are there to knock it out. Kilpatrick on the tackle, 12 carries, 69 yards for Rutherford. Third down and seven. And he goes to Nile Benjamin for the first down by a yard. Nice job by the receiver against Richie Chambers. I love the way Pat Barnes fired that ball in there. That was an absolute bullet. That's what you have to do. You got to get it when you need the first down. You got to get it there. Watch his feet on this. Plants the back foot, steps forward, and boom. He is a fine looking quarterback, isn't he? Yeah, 14 for 19. One big mistake, though. 79 yards and six points later. Here comes the reverse. Niall Benjamin trying to get around the corner short of the first down as Reggie Reeser stays Niall home pretty road. darn well to force him OB. Eight yard gain, but it could have been a lot worse. Still a lot of yards for first down. Now you're in a situation second and two. They've got the speed. Why not? You might have seen the PJ in the back of the Cal helmets, by the way. That stands for Paul Joyner, who is the starting inside linebacker to complement Jared Willard. He was in an auto accident and badly injured, was in a coma, still paralyzed. And it really took the stuffings out of this team when it happened in late August, July. There was many problems with this team injury-wise early. Ihani Oezeke gets the first down from Barnes. That is one of the quickest deliveries I've seen, though, of a quarterback this year. You're going to see it here. Oezeke just setting up. There's that play again. They're bringing the tackle out there. The All-American or the NFL prospect, they believe. 73, Brian Thore. Yeah, Paul Joyner, you know, you, that was a good story. I mean, tragic story, but the guy was a real leader in that defensive yeah. side, along with uh, that big Jarrett Willard. Yeah, they felt they had the best linebacker duo in the country going into the season until P.J. went down. First and ten. Cal's trying to get something going here. No way. Reggie with great coverage against Patrick Young. Number 80, the transfer out of Santa Clara University. Just great position by Reggie. Nowhere to go. Well, I'm curious to see what he did. Patrick Young may have just given up on the route, looking for a flag on the right-hand side. We're not really getting a, a good look at it here. But look at every Steve Hoffman's jersey. My gosh, they're pulling it off him. So it'll be second down and ten for the Washington Huskies and the junior Reggie Reeser on defense. Cal looking at the second and ten on offense. The rollout going to be short as Benjamin makes the completion. It'll be third down and short. Little play action thrown off the run, getting his shoulder squared up, throwing it alone away where you should throw it. Got a good piece of that 10 yards needed to get the first down. So now it'll be third down and two. I think we got the band coming over here on this side of the stadium for a change, or maybe it's the alumni band. No, it's the regular band. They're over here trying to get everybody fired up. Uh, the Husky offense hasn't gotten them fired up, so they're <laughs> trying to get them going here. <laughs> Third down and two. A lob. Let's see if he was inbound. No, and it was incomplete anyway. Good coverage by Russell Hairston. Always okay, the intended receiver. Laying it up there for him. Great speed. Good job by Russell Harrison to strip it out. That's outstanding defensive play. We do have a flag down, however, and it's on the line of scrimmage. So one more time, Pat Flood will come out and do what he has been doing most of the game. Six men on the line on the offense declines fourth down. Too many people. Actually, not enough people. <laughs> yeah, you need seven. <laughs> Supposed to have seven. I'm sitting in my head counting. Let's see, tackle guys. 
It's got to be seven. Let's see, center, two guards. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Oh, Leon Neal's had a great day back on his own 11. Longwell going with a high Leon spiral. Fair catch called, and it'll go well over him. A cow bounce, and it comes to rest in the sunshine on the five yard line. Longwell doing a great job. And let's take a timeout. Five minutes remaining, third quarter. Longwell's punt comes to rest on the five yard line, so that's where Washington will take over with just over five minutes to go. They lead it 28 to 7. Richard Thomas takes one hit, can't find anything, and then Jared Willard, number 45, closes in on 3 0. And let's see if they give him any forward progress or not. Lost a yard. In that case, it'll be a, another rarity. He lost one yard for the first time in his career. Recently, and now it might happen here too. Cal defense doing a job stuffing the the line of scrimmage there. Jerry Willard trying to throw him in there for a safety. <laughs> yeah. They say second and eleven, so that's only the second yard second lost by Richard when carrying the ball. And that man is going to have a fat checkbook here starting <laughs> about a year from now. Second and 11 are going for everything with Bjornsson, but he had double coverage by Cherry and Spears. So now you're looking at third and 11 from inside your own five. Oh. Big play for the Cal defense here, though, Don. Very much so. Four minutes to go in the third. They need to make something happen. That's why I tend to think we're going to see the tailback get anything he can. And what do I know? He's dropping back into the end zone. Cross. Bruner incomplete. Spears there defending along with Clisby. Now you got a punt from out of your own end zone. Not very often you see a tight end running a route 20 yards downfield in the middle. Uh, he got there a little soon, I thought. Yeah. Spears' arm a little early, maybe. Unless he got contact with the ball at the same time. Prince cannot afford to take a step back as Niall Benjamin waits and knows he can get some serious, serious field position here. Fair catch called on the 42 yard line of California. So the Bears get to start in, in Husky territory, rather, on the 42. So a rarity for the Bears getting to start on the good side or the plus side of the 50 yard line for a drive. In fact, it's the first time today. Husky defense, though, have been playing real tough today. They haven't been able yes. to throw a lot of big passes downfield. A lot of the receptions have been a little short gainers with, uh, for example, Rutherford catching it short and running 9, 10 yards downfield. They've made nice adjustments defensively, the Huskies have. First and 10 for Barnes. Here comes Jason Chorick. They lay it off to Sean Bullard, who gets the first down to the 27-yard line. But I'll tell you, Barnes took a shot by Jason Chorick, and Barnes won't forget that one until sometime after Christmas. <laughs> really slow getting up after that one. Bullard with a catch. Chorick has been back there a few times today and put a lot of pressure on the young man. You see, you'll see him coming in here just at the last second. So he took a shot to the head. Yep. Good, good shot right there, Lamar Lyons, or I believe it was. No, it's Kilpatrick. Kilpatrick, yeah. First and ten, down to the 28-yard line. I love that pass play, though, delaying the tight end. Rutherford spins, gets another couple of yards inside the 25 to the 23. Big Beavers in there first, number 43. Give him a four-yard gain. Jason Chorick also in there as Lewis Jones checks into the game now for Washington. Pat Barnes looking for a dry spot. His hands are awful wet out there. The turf is very damp. Very wet, yeah. You and I were both down on the field before the game. California with 278 yards today. Washington, 176. 
100 more yards. Fumble on the exchange. Lewis Jones came into the ball game just in time to get another takeaway. Not sure if it was a snap or not, but we just commented on the wet hands. Could have been a combo. Boy, you called that one, Sonny. Five turnovers. Four of those being fumbled. Oh, bad snap. Ben Lynch. You know, his hands are probably wet too, Don. I mean, yeah. right now, and that ball, they're laying that ball down. And typically, centers, you know, will grab the ball and twist it a little bit and turn it so you'd have the snap, the, so the threads are up to the quarterback when he receives the ball. Fourth fumble. Leon Neal carries. Gets about seven. Good first down play. Andre Rhodes, the linebacker out of Los Angeles, Fairfax High School with the tackle. Andre Rhodes is running down. Leon's just kind of setting the stage for next year with those 36 yards so far today. Leon was averaging three and a half yards per carry. Coming in with a long of 15 yards. Ali blew that out today with that 31 yard. Second down and two. Very little. Leon As they need to get up to 34 for the first down. Andy Jacobs on the stop. Andy Jacobs, number 40, made the stop along with Greg Webb, number 35 for California. He's the little brother of David Webb, who played linebacker for SC and had a cup of coffee with the Seahawks last year, as a matter of fact. The free agent. So third down and one for the dogs. And they got the muscle in there now with two tight ends, make it three tight ends. Richard Thomas, you betcha, up to the 40-yard line where he's met by Andre Rhodes, but five yards too late. Down to a minute 32 here in the third quarter. And the Huskies happy to grind it out right now. Oh, it'd be a great time to grind it out. Take the rest of the third quarter, use part of the fourth quarter, get some points on the board. Give it to Neal, give it to Thomas, give it to Neal, give it to Thomas, and then play action to Bjornsson. That's, that's what you want to do. You want to spread it around. Make sure as many people touch the ball as possible. Neal again. Oh, nice cutback. Get out there. Oh, yeah, he kept his feet. Ricky Spears finally gets him, but not until he goes inside the 40-yard line. Now, there's pretty good speed. Great cutback, but he hit the original hole to begin with and then cut back after he gets through the hole. 23 yard run by Leon Neal. See it right here, Patrick Kessie coming across, getting up there where he had to be, where the original point of attack was, and then breaking it back. Nine carries, 60 yards. Did a smart thing there. He shifted the ball to his left hand so they couldn't knock it out. Good heads up ball. Great here. play by Leon. Been watching Napoleon, watching him cut back like that. Here's Rashawn Sheehy. Matt Clisby able to bring him down to the 20. Otherwise, it might have been six. I think the line of scrimmage is now owned by the Huskies. Well, they've had a good push here the last couple runs, but I tell you what, there's a little sign of Rashawn Sheehy's natural ability. Just thinking, wait a minute, Leon's looking pretty good. I got to do something here. <laughs> well, it's, it's good to see these guys step up and perform. Uh, it's unfortunately Napoleon Kaufman not being in there, but then again, there's that big intrastate rivalry next week, the Apple Cup, and we'd love to have him healthy for that ball game. First and ten from the 21 of California, coming down to probably the last play of the third quarter. Leon, boy, the second effort has been outstanding by by him, by Sheehy, by Richard Thomas, and the offensive line. This time, Kevin Cunningham and Greg Webb make the tackle.
going into the fourth quarter. I'm Don Poyer along with Sonny Six Killer, Dave Hoffman, also James Clifford. Leon Neal coming into this game at 123 yards. He has 65 today. So he may, before it's over with, he could double his total output for the year. As he is playing for the injured Napoleon Kaufman. We thought we would see him in the second half so far. No. On second down and five. Very little this time for Leon. One yard gain, so he's up to 66 yards. Let's go down to Dave and James, guys. Cal Bear defense is not giving up. They're out here trying as hard as they can. Their coaching staff is making them rally around the rushing yard. As Washington is finally starting to move the ball, maybe getting the Cal defense a little bit, but they're holding to under 100 yards thus far. Now I'll tell you, the Husky defense has come out here and just redeeming themselves from last week at Stanford. They've felt bad about that. They're upset. They're doing a fine job on these guys. Only seven points so far. Those takeaways are a big factor. Boy, uh, isn't that the truth? They're down in five for the Huskies. Neal in the backfield with Richard Thomas. Janowski is wide to the right with a couple of tight ends on the left side, and they send Leon right up the belly and inside the 15. And I think he's short to the first. Reagan Upshaw, one of the first there, and on the bottom of the pile. And they're going to kick the field goal. Fans disappointed. Last Husky home game. Fourth and two. Now, this is a good choice I by Coach Manbright. Well, that and I think he's thinking, well, I got a 28 7 lead, and I'm playing a very good friend across the way. I'm competitive. Don't worry about that. But. Times the better thing to do at this this point anyway. This will be a 31-yard attempt, and it's good. Boy, he has become Mr. Reliable, hasn't he? Thirteen twenty here in the fourth quarter. Sonny, you got a busy week next week. Well, there's uh, Apple, Apple Cup, Cup fever for the week in uh, Yakima, Olympia. Different luncheons going on. He'll be the featured guy in most of those. Edwards from the goal line. Out of the sun, into the shadows, still has the football and lots of room. Lawyer Malloy tries to play off the block and they finally force him into the wall. Way to go, John Wells. You got a lick on him. <laughs> I think they're going to call. <laughs> they, they got into Husky Terrace. No, they didn't. They put it at the bare 49 yard line. Did Wales get the lick out of bounds though? I think he did. This is a long one. They bunch him up and then go left. And that's why this man leads the Pac-10. Now outside. And Malloy's the only one with the angle on him. Except for John Wales. <laughs> he may have drawn the penalty. Huh. That could Hard be to tell on the replay because you couldn't see where he went out of bounds. But uh, Interesting. Still got a convention going on on the far sideline between Pat Flood and the rest of the officials. Well, they're pointing their other direction here. Maybe there's a block from behind. Let's get the word from the head man. That could be. Ball is on the 49 right now, California. Which would mean, yeah, Wales. Two fouls on the play during the run. A clip. By the return team, 15 yard penalty. After the play, dead ball foul, personal foul on the kicking team. The result is the ball ends up at the end of the run, first and 10. So it stays on the 49 yard line. Here it is, a little better angle. Goes out of bounds at the 49 right there. Oh, yeah. That's not even close. John. John. <laughs> he's all pumped up. He's had those big field goals today. <laughs> not even close. Yeah, he's three for three today. So, first and ten, fortunately for the Huskies. They had a clipping penalty by California. Oh, what a grab by Iwazuke at the 40 of Washington for a first down against Reese. Great hands. A ways okay. Cows move the ball real well between the 30s, Don. You know, obviously they've got nearly 300 yards so far in the ball game. 
60 more than a 50 more than the Huskies. A ways okay number six in the Pac-10 in reception. First and ten now from the 40 of the dogs. Setting up the screen nice play read well by Lamar Lyons as they went to Edwards. Is that a screen Sonny or is it more of just laying it off to your receiver. Well that one there I'm not sure what they do is they like to they like to settle down in the middle. They've done it a couple times with a tight end where they delay and throw under. This one was that's his route. He just flares yeah, out and yeah, releases. Just a flare. Yeah. Sometimes when you see the quarterback letting the rush come on and yet there are no blockers in front of him, it's hard to tell. Well we had people coming after him on that last play so we had yeah. more than the standard four rushes. Second down and nine. It could be more. Three wideouts. Two on this side. He's headed right now. Looking deep. Here comes Steve Hoffman like a big old freight train and he gets him out of bounds. Might have picked up a couple yards and he definitely got one of the chain members, chain crew. He says, I'm wearing red, white, and blue, and they still run into me. <laughs> Everybody covered down downfield. Oh, he almost threw it there, but here goes Hoffman. I tell you what, it's a good thing he didn't. Nice. Hoffman was Huffman. He was, he was, he was, he was uh, trucking right on down Highway uh, Interstate 5 there, wasn't he? He had a mission. <laughs> well, when you're 6'6", 260, 65 pounds, you get it all going one direction. At the freight train. Third down and 11. Four wideouts. Three left and one to the right side from the shotgun. Here comes underneath. Good pressure. Too high. As Barnes was looking for a ways okay. Away to a ways okay. That's a, Could be a foul on the Cal yeah, line. We do have a flag in the backfield. Galliaga down there. There's a little pushing going on. Well, there were a lot of purple jerseys trying to penetrate the wall back there to get to Barn. And there goes another one. Which means somebody said something. Who's closest to Beth Flood? Dead ball, personal foul on the off on the defense. Dead ball, personal foul on the offense. It'll offset. Second down. Interesting. Gee. Wonder which one I came can't first. That. Yobi's about had it with Pac-10 officials this year. <laughs> Especially after last week when they didn't see the Arizona man step out of bounds on that 97 yard return on the interception. I'll tell you one thing about Gilby, he knows how to operate that hat, doesn't he? Oh, he does. <laughs> he does. Watch this. Here's when he found out what it was. <laughs> well, his father is an English teacher. There he goes. Yeah, there he goes. There's a look. <laughs> Fourth down, they're gonna go for it. Fourth and eleven with 12 18 to go. Why not? Short. Couldn't do it. He's a yard short going against Lewis Jones. And Ink Galliaga. Close. Isn't that frustrating? You have a nice pass play. You run the ball downfield and you come up a yard short. Yep. You gotta get at least two to three yards beyond the stakes. Looks good in the highlight film, but you got to get the yeah. first. See what he said? Yeah. Good throw. And it was an excellent throw. Didn't hear it. Didn't either. Arizona right there. USC. Right there. Oregon State handing it to Washington State so far with that bone offense. Kid's a killer. Well, that their, bone. well and their frustration probably from sure. losing the big game last week. Yep. First to ten now for Washington. First string still in there with 12 13 to go. Leon Neal. And he's wrestled down by Jared Willard. I like what he does there, Don. He just says, hey, puts his head down and just drives forward. Coming into the season, Sporting News picked him as the number one inside linebacker in America. Well, we've had a few of those here at Huskyville. Yep. I think they're standing on the sideline somewhere. They are. There's two of them that are listening to us right now that are the best in the country. Leon, 13 carries for 72 yards. Good for Leon. I'm happy for him. He could be a tired Jose. Concerned about number eight, though. Not getting to do what he wanted to do to end his Husky career, which has been so fabulous. <laughs> Look at Leon keep the legs going. Hey, boy, that'll bring the crowd to its feet going against Spears. 
Spears has had two free rides today. Mark Bruner <laughs> in the first half and Leon Neal right here. Yeah, but Leon's only 5'9", 180. <laughs> You're right, though. Spears is getting some extra mileage on his credit card today. Boy, oh boy. Let's see this. This is great. Breaking it out. Things are just going to throw him down. Oh, coaches love to see that. Too. Does he get Man. bonus miles for that? I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, get a first class upgrade on that <laughs> one, baby. Third down and two for the dogs. Leon again. Got his first down, I believe, by about a yard. Patrick Kessie, as usual, arriving late, trying to get a lick over the top of the pile, number 54. <laughs> Got it by a yard. Robert Sapp out there playing tackle 72. Up to 81 yards for Leon today. He did a good job of following his offensive lineman up through the hole. Good job by the line today. They're really second half. They really come out and started to play a little bit. First and ten with ten and a half minutes to go here in the fourth. Jornson and Janowski come out here to the near side. It's on the 42 of Washington. Ooh, look out! Is that Reagan again? It is. Reagan up shot, wrestling Leon Neal down like a calf and well, that's great. He threw him ahead two yards. He did. He actually got <laughs> a field a couple more, didn't he? They call it no gain. Could have been a tackle for a loss. Instead of losing two, we're back to the Liberty Regional line of scrimmage. You know, that's something, too, that Upshaw's got to work on. Can't tackle that way in the bigs here in the back. Then you can get it occasionally, but he did that to Richard Thomas as well. Not the greatest fundamentals, but he <laughs> he gets them down. You find that with a lot of people labeled a speed rusher. You uh, know, they're more in tune to getting to the quarterback. That's true. Second and ten. Hewitt across the middle. And the Hewitt to Neal connection continues. This time maybe for two or three yards. Willard, number 45, close again. As Damon Hewitt and his competitive spirit just continues to grow and grow, according to Jim Lambright. I love to see Damon get look for number 85. You know, Mark yeah. Bruce had such a great career as a Husky and not a ball caught today. Actually he had one early. Did he have one yeah, early? Yeah, he did have one according to the first half, right, for seven yards. Well, let's give him two on the day. So now he has 87 career tag, uh, catches this here in the purple and gold. Over the head and behind Richard Thomas. Time to punt for the Huskies. Artis Houston was defending. Artis, quite a story. Number 19, the cornerback, is heads off the field. He had to play last year, just a few days after getting word that his brother Cornell had been killed in Somalia. A courageous young man came back and was able to play. He said he wanted to because his brother would have told him to. Jeff Prince back to punt. Jeff, likewise, a tough week losing his dear friend down in Long Beach. Low punt, fair catch. Man, nice catch on the part of Dial Benjamin. That's a tough one to bring down. 8.45 remaining in the ball game. Last home game for 14 seniors in purple and gold. Here in the fourth quarter, first and ten after the punt by Washington. Barnes, a lot of time, ball deflected, still caught by Oweza K, close to the first down. There's some heads up play by the young Nigerian. Nick Galiago was on him on defense. Nine yard play, so it'll be second down and short. Cal still trying to get a little something going here. Oweizake now seven catches today for 60 yards. His high of the year was eight against Hawaii. Likewise for Benjamin. He had eight in that same game against the Rainbows. 
The backup fullback is carrying. That's Marshall Foran, number 49. And he's stopped by Ink Aliaga, along with Lamar, Tony Paris, rather. Three yard gain. Tony, they have a lot of confidence in this young man. He'll be stepping in for Lamar Lyons at that rover position next year. Had an interception last week against Stanford. And tremendous special teams. Oh, yeah. Get to see him for three more years. Especially early in the year. Played very well in special teams. First and ten. And again, they roll out to give him some time, but it doesn't matter as Justin Thomas, number five, with the tackle. That'll be his second sack of the year. Boy, just like a big old gorilla coming <laughs> yeah. in there at 6'5", 245. That's a tough spot for Pat Barnes right now, the Cal quarterback. You know, everybody knows. What are you going to do? You're down 31-7. You made a good point, though, when you saw Gilby yelling to Pat Barnes on that earlier series. Nice pass. Good pass. And that's what he's got to do. This season's over as far as California doing anything, but he's laying out the foundation for this young man next year. Well, Gilby's a great motivator. He knows how to talk yes. the lingo of the young kids, and uh, that's why he's such an outstanding recruiter. One more timeout. Just under seven minutes to go as Cal calls a timeout. And Gilby and Mr. Barnes are back in the classroom. down to the last couple of minutes now on this one the last home game of 94 second down and 20 after the sack setting up the screen a lot of room Rutherford cuts back gets up to the 40 and hits a purple wall he's still four yards short of the first down where he met Hairston and Tony Perry nice play though by Rutherford well, you know you're going to have a strong rush by all the people on the down. You've got five people rushing hard. Good time for a screen. Good call by the offensive cow. Rutherford's a tremendous runner once he has that ball out in the open field. He's becoming more and more involved in the offense. He had 578 yards all of last year. 543 coming into this game with a couple more to go. Third down and four. They only need four and they get it. Always a K gets away from Hairston. It gets the first and much more down to the 33 yard line against Russell. And Lawyer Malloy knocks him out of bounds. Russell, I saw him earlier in about the third quarter. His chin was banged up a little bit. Yeah. It looks like he's limping just a little bit. Here it is again. Sharp pass out there. Look at that nice tight spiral. He almost dropped it again, but the ways of K, look at that. You can flat get to it. He's got the softest pair of hands I think I've seen in some time. First and ten. Here we go again. Same man down to the 15, 16 yard line. Another Cal first down as the Bears are trying to speed it up now and the dogs are trying to take all the time they can here. See when he got up off the ground, Don, he tried to avoid the turf with those hands. Once you get those gloves soft and wet, hard to catch the ball. 17 yard play for Gilby and the Bears. Down to the 15 is where they mark it. Well, the Huskies were down, what, 13 points with 2.03 to go. Cal trying to make something happen. That was last year, if you recall. And now Cal would love to return the favor, but it won't happen on this play. Maybe one yard, Aliaga finally makes the stop, but several people in the backfield. Clock continuing to run at 5:40. Good job by Raynard here, busting it outside. Every good defense had him. <laughs> Reggie Reeser with the cornerback tackle. Second down and ten from the 15. 
Touchdown, California. A ways a K with catch number 10, and he beats Reggie Reeser. As California closes the gap to a 31 13 margin with 5 12 to go and Gilby's going for two a tremendous route up on the left hand side perfect throw you, know, you really have to respect his speed back there and and uh, Reggie Reeser of course <laughs> has done a great job all day ways okay right there good throw that's exactly what SC did against Washington State last week that inside slant has become very effective here in recent uh, weeks in the Pac-10, we've seen it work well. So now they'll go for two with Awazake and Gaskins going wide to the right side and the shotgun formation. Benjamin in motion, so everybody's on the right side, and he's got all afternoon. Goodness sakes, still alive. Flag has gone down. Look out, David Ritchie. He gets knocked down. Still looking for somebody and incomplete. That is one of the strangest things I've seen in a long time, Sonny. Yeah, it really. <laughs> and the flag is down. <laughs> it came from the back, Judge. It could be defensive holding. Oh, my. Strange game. It came flying from the back of the end zone. Yeah. Well, that's that's where they come from. That's for sure. <laughs> Holding on the defense, half a distance, retry. Jim will be more than happy to get back into the locker room and take another win from this guy. <laughs> Randy Hart signaling in the defense, and it was interesting with the motion in the formation that. Cal used everybody was on the right oh, side. Yeah. He actually had somebody open right in the middle. Right side of the field. They'll try again. Half the distance to the goal. The check off by Barnes. Three, two, one. Too late. Didn't get it away in time. I don't think he did. He sure got popped, I'll tell you that. You better believe he did. He's taken at least three. That I have counted. Well, that just gives them more room for pass for me or pass routes. So <laughs> put the ball back on the six yard line. Hey, Gilby, just kick it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say. Why don't you just kick it? You get your position. Hey, Good thing the clock isn't moving. He's had enough misery this season. Just <laughs> kick the thing. Keep in mind, Denny Schuler is the man calling the shots upstairs, the offensive coordinator. More of a balanced formation this time. Cross the middle. No, batted down by Lewis Jones. Jones. Whoa, that tired me out. <laughs> oh, so man. But he did the right thing. You do oh, have absolutely. to try and get two points there. 31 15. Heck yeah. Fires the ball on the left side. Good job by Lewis Jones diving to knock it down. Well, if it that had to been a perfect pass. 31 15, and then you get two, two touchdowns with two extra points times two. And you tie it up, but that's not going to happen now as they trail 31 to 13. 5 12 to go. I'll never forget last year. Standing there just shaking my head with those two minutes to go. It's still down 13. And everything that had to happen did. Dave Barr on the right wants to play, can't because of that broken collarbone, and he's talking with his quarterback and learning and learning and learning. I tell you, Dave Barr absolutely got hammered. Two you years ago. Bars. Oh, hey, Bar, yeah. No, Dave Barr. Got hammered. Tough Jose as a quarterback. Onside attempt, still loose. Might be cow ball. The Bears say it is. A couple of Huskies down there. I think one was Eric Bjornson. Not, not able to come up with it. Cow ball. California ball. Five oh seven remaining in the game. And we 
shall go back in time and see this again. Now remember last year Scott Greenlaw came up with the recovery on the Husky onside kick to keep things alive for Washington. Gilby needs three scores however. Looked like it hits a Husky right in the chest. Oh it did. Eric Bjornsson I believe. Yep. OK so it'll be first and ten on their own forty eight yard line. Yeah, that's a tough one to handle. I can't believe Ernie Conwell got out, out muscled for the ball. Barnes going deep. Gaskins the intended receiver and Lamar Lyons unknowingly deflected the ball. <laughs> so it'll be second down and ten with five oh one to go. All the pass patterns right now though Sonny deep deep slants deep flag patterns. Trying to hit the uh, little areas down here, 10, 15 yards downfield. Great spot. Hit the seams. Kenny Schuler stretching out the Husky defense as much as he can. Calling from the booth high above the carpet here at Husky Stadium. Second down and 10. Two wide outs to each side now from the shotgun. Always okay. One of those rare occasions where he can touch it but not catch it. A little high, a little juice on it. I think he kind of lost his footing too, trying to cut to the outside. So third and ten for Mr. Barnes with an obvious career high, 288 yards today. Got his first touchdown pass and also his first interception, which also resulted in a touchdown. Well, I saw him throw the ball over after the touchdown pass and save it as a souvenir. Oh, it's good. Third down and ten. Benjamin no it'll be fourth down Reggie Reeser chasing a mobile along with Steve Hoffman good hustle by Hoff that time Hoff Jr. Hoff seniors in broadcasting <laughs> good job to get out of bounds though now Benjamin we have not called his name at all today not all that often I'd remember he took a 40 yard reverse last year. Steve Hoffman ready to strap it on again next year. He will be one of the leaders on this team as a senior in 95. Fourth down, they need four yards. Nope. Flag goes down, however, Lamar Lyons. That'll give them their first. That's really unfortunate because there is no way that pass was going to be completed. No. That's unfortunate. Well, maybe they'll uh, say it was unca uncatchable. And again, maybe not. Automatic first. Ooh, I didn't realize he got his arms all around him, too. It had appeared, looking at it the first time, that he might have just tripped him up with his chest falling down behind the receiver. Well, Lamar didn't argue too much. No, he didn't. Kind of got in there with the crowd real yes, quick. Yes, he did. Where can I hide? <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be first and ten on the 43 of Washington. Hurry up, guys. Get, huddle up. Huddle up. <laughs> <laughs> Call the defensive huddle. Come on. Huddle up. Let's go. Somebody behind me. Somebody in front. <laughs> and again, we got a hold up of some kind. Yobi's already out of the field. Trying to say something to you know, He wants him to reset the 25 second clock. And that's been done. And he has been. So 447 to go, and they will huddle up again. Good call, Sonny. Well, stay warm next week, buddy. I will. I will. Apple Cups, well, you know better than I do how much fun they can be. <laughs> First and ten, though, in this one for California, trailing 31-13. Complete, but short of the first down if they mark it correctly. It looks like they will. Always you know, K with a reception. Watching these routes, it's uh, it's fun to watch because Always K and, and the other receivers, you know, normally you run your route 12 yards deep and you run it back to 10. And exactly, I tell you, the quarterbacks have good uh, good timing today with their wideouts. Perfect. And of course, both of these quarterbacks will be back. 
next year. Yeah, and that route gives a quarterback it's a chance. You know, you're running off your defender two more yards instead of just a flat out. Second and one, dodges the bullet, then throws one. Looks for Benjamin. Touchdown. Going against Tony Benjamin. Tony Parrish. Tony Parrish, excuse me, Niall Benjamin with a reception, and Parrish is the man who gets beat. And Cal cuts the lead now to 31-19. And let's see if Gilby goes for two again. Incaliago was the man blitzing or dogging. Perfect throw. Tony lost to Parrish lost the ball looked like. When you see a receiver looking back at the quarterback you know typically you're taught to turn around when they're ahead and look at and you look at their eyeballs because you know receivers eyeballs get real big when the ball's coming in because they're concentrating so much. That's when you got to turn and at least flail your arms or do something. Pat it, Barnes with his second TD pass today. He could have been called for face guarding anyway. Yeah had the arms up. So they'll go for two. That would make it a 10 point lead if they get it here. A 10 point Husky lead. Option pitch. Rutherford should get it. No, he won't. What a great job of pursuit. Big play oh, right oh. there. I thought he had the angle and then the numbers in his favor. But man, Aliaga came out of nowhere and so did his teammates. Stuffed the blocker out front. Great job. I tell you what, two two point conversions and the score would be 31 23. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big time play. Great defensive pursuit by the dog right here Don I'm sure you did too it looked like he was going to walk in there Lewis Jones there stuffed the blocker and made the made the opportunity for Inc to make the play Again, the onside. Oh, it's California ball. Holy moly. Two in a row. Keep in mind, the clock was what? Just over five minutes when they got it the last time. It still got four and a half minutes to go. Somebody better ring the wake up call on the far side of the field. Longwell with a terrific kick. I tell you, the kids had a tough year. Eric Bjornsson, I believe the fellow just before him deflected it. Matt Clisby gets it. Time for the defense to wake up. Barnes. Calls a timeout, and that is California's last timeout. Why? 25 second clock was running. You're down. right. You're right. You're right, Sonny. Hey, I was going to say, this kid has had a tough year, but I tell you one thing he can do he can kick the onside kick. What they have been so impressed about him by is the fact that he has fought back. After the four punts blocked and after the three field goals blocked and an extra point blocked, he's just kept fighting back. I wonder why the Huskies don't have more people over there in that area. Play with a, with a straight onside kick with the hands, hands return team, as they call it, with all the guys supposedly with the good hands. But uh, heck, there's seven guys over there. He's a soccer player, though. Maybe he can come around with the left foot where there's nobody at. I don't yeah. know. You never know, but it is a 31-19 ball game. Well, that's why you practice the onside kick in practice, Don. And it's a football game. 11 points scored by Washington in the second half. First and 10. Complete to the 40-yard line where Richie Chambers stops Benjamin. Got an injured wide receiver. Looks like it might be Gaskins. Yeah. yeah, number 82 hurt his ankle. I tell you, we have not put really a lot of pressure on the young man. We need to get a little pressure. Oh. The Huskies have to get back there and uh, get a hand in his face. 
Second and four. He fumbled, fumbled it. it again. Fumble on the ground. Purple all over him, and let's see. Judging from the crowd, it must be a wrestling match still, or Cal has it. Is that Ferran? California ball. It is Cal ball. And <laughs> Barnes taking on Deke Beavers. There, he just lost it as he was trying to throw. You know, it's funny, he did the same thing, Sonny, at practice yesterday. Wow, uh, then he tried to throw it again with people hanging all over him and Frank Be Beatty coming up with the recovery. I was standing there with Gilby and his other coaches, and he did the same thing. He just flat out like a Dave Craig. The ball went out of his hands. Soap dish throw. Interception. Intercepted. Look out, Russell Hairston. Stay in bounds. Got to stay in bounds. Oh, yeah. There's a flag down. And the flag is down way back in California territory, back towards where the return was headed by Hairston. For Hairston, that's his third interception. Frank Beatty, 62 for the Bears, and Richie Chambers having a conversation. I wonder if Barnes is hurt, too. They were looking at his right hand. You know, that came after that, as you said, the near fumble. Penalty on Washington. They'll back it up 15, but they still retain possession. Well, I'm sure somebody on the return team went downfield. Somebody probably threw a block on the quarterback, Pat Barnes. That one kind of flew on Barnes after being, might have been banged up in that previous play. When he was... Fumbling around, fumbling trying around, to yeah. hang on to it. Kind of looked like it is now all the trainers are trying to take care of him. Dave Barr, the first one there to help him, too. You know, you're right, Don. You know, if you ever had your hand whacked, you know, while you're out there, and you're, it yeah. doesn't hit you right away, and after, you know, about 10 seconds, it just, it goes numb on you. That's right. Reserves are in there for the Huskies. Ted Stark is at quarterback with 316 to go. Rashawn Sheehy. Oh, my. Look out. There's some speed. Out of bounds. There's a late hit. Throw the flag. Now that should clearly have been a flag. Reagan Upshaw was the man who hit him over. Let's see it again here. We saw it again in the third quarter, Don, when he came in for Leon Neal. Ooh, there's a face mask. But right, almost. right here. That is just flat out speed right there. Okay, he's out of bounds. Oh my goodness, folks. That's five steps and he oh. still gets hit. 30 yard run for Sheehy, which is his career long. Not hard to figure that one out. 13 yard carry before. Stark still with it and gives to his fullback. Mike Reed, number 36. Down to the three minute mark. Some nice speed there on Sheehy's oh, part. Oh, it sure huh? is. We saw it in the spring, as you mentioned. I also like Mike Reed, the freshman, six feet, 200. Yep. He's going to have a nice career here at Huskyville. And they'll let the clock wind down now. Yeah, oh, Reed's going to be around a while. Yeah, it's good to see Ted Stark getting a little action, too. But I'll tell you what, that was a big interception because Cal had been moving wherever they wanted to in the last three minutes. Second and seven for the dogs. Gee, he again. Oops. And a slip in the backfield as Sheehy carries again. So the Huskies will extend that home winning streak, which is the longest in the Pac-10, by the way, to seven. Winning their last game of the year last year at home, that being the Apple Cup, and then all six contests this year. I think they'll ever get it back up to that quote, 17 at one point. That's what every team tries to do. Yeah. Senior class, an amazing record to go 20. Well, with this win, what 23 and 1, 24 and 1. Very impressive playing at home. Boy, there's some good speed there as Quisby closes in, but he had the angle on it. I don't know. The, the linemen were pulling to the right. <laughs> See, he goes to the left. Well, I'm sorry to say we didn't get to watch Napoleon Kaufman and was not able to come out here for the second half. He had been fighting turf toe really for a number of weeks. Gilby, I'm certain, was happy not to see Napoleon. 
But I just hope Nip's okay. Coming up on the minute mark. And then we pack our bags and get ready for next season. Huskies call a timeout. They still have one left here with a minute to go. Jared Willard is you know, he's walking up the sidelines, but he was hurting a bit coming up to talk to Gilby. Well, you know, he's not giving up even with a minute to go and being down by 12. He's still going to give 110. Artis Houston, one of the seniors on this team. We talked about him and how amazing he's been in his career. Sounds like a day of upsets. By now, everybody knows since it's Monday night, but it, it is. It is. <laughs> There's some good you have fans to think right in there. the future there, Six Keller. You uh, see, you know, you have to think that it's Monday night. In fact, you and I are probably <laughs> at home trying to stay awake to watch the last <laughs> minute of this thing. <laughs> I know a Woodruff, our producer's asleep by now. There's no way he'd be awake. <laughs> Snoring into our ear as we speak. Sonny, I just want to say how much I enjoyed working with you too this year. It's been an absolute gas. Don, it's been a lot of fun for me. Uh, one more to go, but uh, I've had a great time this year. Really been fun. It has been fun to watch this Husky team put up with the, the probation, having nothing to play for other than trying to win. I'll tell you though, Don, what really has made it is all that preparation we, you and I and Steve Woodruff have done prior to these games. I, I just think that's that valuable time of preparation has really worked. <laughs> I, I missed those meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Oop, tough pitch, Stark. Gee, he's still trying to get a hold of it. And finally, it's Ted Stark on top. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're seeing the same thing. Jared Willard and Frank Garcia really nipping at each other, and a referee got in between them. With less than a minute to go. Richard Thomas right in the middle of that beehive of Huskies. Number 3 0. He'll be. He'll be coming back as a leader. Well, and a big time leader, I guess. Because he was a leader this year, actually. And he will indeed be back. Barnes looks like that arm is just fine as Richie Chambers knocks him out of bounds, the receiver. Awezake again picking up boy another catch is that we'll get the numbers on Awezake on how many catches he has twelve catches today for 142 yards big day great pair of hands yes and he's still out there and he got 46 seconds to go. Barnes gets it over to Rutherford as the first down as time has clearly become their biggest enemy with only 37 seconds to go Russell Jason Rutherford out of bounds. Uh, see we have Lamar Lyons went to high school with Niall Benjamin I believe. Yeah there's a lot of connections here coaching staffs and players as well. Twenty five players from California on the Husky roster two Washington kids on the Cal roster. Which kind of surprises me when you've got the, the Northwest connection with Yobi and Denny Schuler, Tom Cable, a lot of Northwest guys on that team. Shows the great recruiting by the Northwest schools. Yeah, there's another deflected catch by Aways okay. And it'll be first and goal inside the 10. Tony Parrish along with David Kilpatrick. And they want to get on the board at least one more time. And the Bears first down. They went for two. They could make it 31 27 should they get the touchdown. Flag goes down. And clock is stopped with 24 seconds. Young man's coming in here and thrown for almost 400 yards. Yeah, he was over the 303 just a minute ago, and he's, he's going to have a great career. Got an almost cavalier attitude, we're told. He'll just come in and say, hey, there's nothing we can't do. And he's kind of proven that. Look at that. 
three hundred eighty seven makes you think how many times in the next couple of years will he do that for Gilby up to four hundred yard mark. Well you know Gilby he's an offensive minded coach anyway and uh, always has been when he was yes. recruited to come over here to University of Washington with Don James. No doubt about it. I wonder how many tickets he had to get for today. Half the city is the home is coming down for him and Coach Armstrong at the coin top. First and 15. First and goal from the 15. Benjamin knocked out of bounds by Russell Hairston. Got three yards. But that does stop the clock with 20 seconds, and it's getting real chilly in Husky Stadium. So the Bears will be taking on Stanford in, of course, what is called the big game. And that's this year, it's at Berkeley. California got that win last year against Walsh, and the Cardinal went on to win the Alamo Bowl. Sack time. Yes. Oh my goodness. They got to call that a sack. Yeah, yeah he was down. Was it Richie or was it Hoffman? That means the clock keeps running. Yes indeed. Hoffman with a sack. That's going to do it. Game over. Don't think they're going to be able to call that play. No. So California goes down but it goes down swinging <laughs> boy it sure does number 18 right there did a lot of slinging today almost 400 yards today in his second career start in the Pac-10 for the California Bears as Gilby is 0 and 3 going against those dogs and Lambeau is 2 and 0 oh against the Bears as a head coach but it's always interesting when those two get together <laughs> Lambeau and Gilby. Two guys who have a beautiful big ring on their hand from a 1991 effort for Coach Don James and the Huskies to win that national title. And a lot of Huskies coming over to say hi and goodbye to Gilby. A lot of seniors who certainly know him and spent two years with him, Sonny. That's right. Donovan Schmidt. Joe Patrick, Steve Morton, who replaced Keith Gilbertson, his lawyer. As I, told, I said earlier, you know, Gilby is a great player's kind of coach. He, he talks to Lingo. I mean, he's, he's a fun-loving guy. Uh, not that Lambeau isn't. <laughs> <laughs> but they're so fun. They complimented each other so well. They, yes, they did. Here's a man who's the epitome of defensive coaches around the land, and Gilby, the same for offense. So they were so potent together. And Steve Hoffman, who entered the game with that sack and is going to be a husband here sometime soon and Jim Lambright gets the victory. I think Hoff and Klopp our buddies Dave Hoffman and James Clifford who by the way we have thoroughly enjoyed having with us for these home broadcasts will have an interview for us with the co-captain. Let's go down there right now guys. Hey guys we're down here with these seniors played the last game. Did a great job today beating Cal. Here was starting center Frank Garcia. He's been dominating guys in this field for a long long time Frank. How was it the last time? How do you feel? You know, it's exciting to win this game, and uh, you know, emotions haven't really come in yet. And you know, I'm sure they will. When we're in the team room. Uh, you know, it's a great victory for us, and you know, I've had a great five years, and sad to be gone. It's a great five years, Frank. Great five years. Outside linebacker Donovan Schmidt here. He's had a real tough career. He's overcome a lot. And Donovan, we just want to say thank you, and you know, just congratulations on a great career in Washington. First off, I'd like to dedicate this game to God for the good for my career, just to be here. And you know, it was, a, it was a fun game. The, game. the first half of the game was so emotional. You know, he just blew as hard as he could. It's exciting to play here. Thanks a lot. Great job. It's been a pleasure watching you guys. And man, good times. Good times. <laughs> now you get Don. We've loved it. Well, I was going to say, it's about fun. Yeah, thanks a lot. You guys had a great time this year. We've had a wonderful time with you. And thanks again. Now you can have some real good times with Donovan and with Frank. <laughs> One more week, training rules are over.